Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the land of dreams and nightmares. I hope you're having a fine January evening. I am Esper, your gracious and most generous dungeon master. And I'm joined by, well, at the moment, four fine fellows, but we should have one more joining in anytime now. So whenever he feels uh, ready, he'll be jumping in. So let's do some character introductions. Now, Adam, you actually are, you have two characters tonight. You have the one you've been playing, but you're going to have a different one coming in. You're going to make a transition. Yeah, it's going to be difficult. I'm going to, I'm going to have to play two roles. Uh, <laughs> so yes, uh, if we're, if we're doing introductions, as always, I'm Adam. And for part of this session, I'll be playing Kivish Aljavarthen, the clan Ursvamp, who is a dwarf and a druid of the Circle of Dreams, who is leading his own dwarven clan off to greener pastures, perhaps. Uh, and then he's going to go away and introducing Kadarak Hawkness of Rockness, who's actually from Sumnerfield, who is a weirdo multi-class bard paladin of currently aggregate ninth level. All right. So we'll be meeting Kadarak here shortly and maybe saying a few uh, farewells or maybe a see you later to Kippish. Uh, who we got next? Let's go, Dennis. Hey, guys. <clears throat> My name is Dennis, and as always, I play Lycar, the very cynical Storm Saucer. Vince? I'm Vince. I play Drake Fell, the Wood Elf Monk. And Warsaw. I'm Warsaw. I play Captain Noxiqual, the Hexblade Warlock. All right. So last session was an intense one. It started off with you all once again storming. Uh, Dirge Tor, storming uh, Clan Axwort, a dwar uh, rival Dwarven clan. And there was another intense battle as your party took on an uh, entire faction. And apparently an airplane. <laughs> I had my mouth thinking, hmm, did they have a, like a aerial cavalry? <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> that some, was some, really ornitho well. some ornithopters. <laughs> I that was I, I don't know what's going on, but that was like a really well flying plane. <laughs> All right, so who remembers some things from last section? Let's who wants to start off some recapping? Well, we lost another party member. <laughs> so yeah, I, I can do it since uh some some stuff involved why Kibish is getting getting on down the trail. So guess. yes, unfortunately we did lose another party member. Uh Nick, second character in as many sessions. Uh, uh, Har not Harley. Yeah, Harley. Harley. Avery, then Harley. Avery, who will then be, Harley, yeah. Exactly. Who will be sorely missed, although I, I did get an opportunity yesterday to meet his new character, who seems pretty kick-ass. Uh, yeah, he fell to a hail of arrows and other projectiles from an entire army of skeletons, which we initially... Much like with the trolls that uh, claimed Avery, we initially thought to run away and uh, then ended up winning the fight because of a couple of key turning points. And then, of course, the last fight, which was almost hardly a fight because we were, you know, two pronged attacking from either side against the remaining Axe Wart soldiers. Yeah, yeah, your and your party had already yeah. devastated their forces. And one of the last things was Kivish getting into his noggin, which who knows what goes on in there. I certainly don't. Uh, to try and rally some of the fallen, or not fallen, some of the remaining Axe Ward soldiers under the axe, the ancestral axe of their, fa their fallen leader, to see if he could lead them off to a new existence of better things and uh, of support of Morpheus in the Ambrosia Temple and restoring it once again, once again, to its uh, form of glory. So this is uh, going to be an attempt of Kivish to uh, this time officially not claim, but secure the Ambrosia Temple. So this is linking back to Indeed. some older, uh, or I guess I should say earlier sessions in the campaign in yep. a different region of Drekengrim. I'll pull up the map for everyone's sake here. 
All right, so I'm in this, Merkelon's jaw. Yeah, exactly. Merkelon's jaw. This uh, chapter that we've been in has been featuring the Dins Morris region. Uh, but prior to this chapter, we had a chapter down here in Merkelon's jaw, which is an arid and rocky peninsula, very uh, with a lot of jagged, spiny mountains. And uh, well, I won't go into that because there's a lot, but that's where the prior chapter was. Uh, you assisted the Ambrosia Temple, which is a pretty quiet and deserted place, yet um, Morpheus is there. Well, he's a statue at least, but he is there, uh, the god of dreams and healing. All right, so your plan is to to take some dwarves down that away and set up a, a new, to establish yeah, a new settlement. All right, so we'll get into that um a little bit later on i think we'll have just a kind of a bunch of different things happening in tonight's session and as always you all are free to interact and play your characters as you will um what was the other thing ah oh, yes who got voted for inspiration it was me yeah of course all right so due to your valiant brave and cunning efforts in the prior session you were voted to receive inspiration Make sure you use it this session. I will. After the battle, after the battle of Dirge Tor, in which um, the host of Norgal's Rock, greatly aided by your strike force, fairly well demolished the uh, the enemy uh, clan, Axwort. Many of Axwort were slain. There were some that at the end of the battle um uh, uh you know changed loyalties over to uh kivish and whatever his ideas are uh it seems that there were some members of clan axe that were not happy with the arrangement uh there at dorge tour not exactly a pleasant place to live and being involved with Mer queen necromancy and other such nasty bits Maybe not what everyone would like to be doing with their existence. So there were some prisoners, you know, those who didn't die and those who didn't uh, switch loyalties and those who didn't just run out, you know, wildly into the swamps to an unknown fate. Um, prisoners of war uh, have been claimed. And there's not a much reason for Norgal's Rock to stay here. Yeah, for the, for the numbers. Yeah, the 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 different uh units that that came here and, and essentially sieged this rocky hill um now there are some maybe some plundering and exploring to do instead of dirge tour but it's a bit of a grim place and there still are some dangers lurking in its in its uh tunnels there's even a labyrinth in there somewhere um so i uh, i am i am for simply cutting to a scene at norgal's rock like the return of the host and this like grand um, uh, set victory ceremony that's going to be taking place. Is everyone for that? Yes. It sounds yeah. about right. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good with me. Sounds good. Okay. So we'll skip ahead. Um, we'll say just a few days here. Um, the dwarven host of clans Half Grey and Alder and Mithrilian and those minor clans beholden to them all have repaired back to Norgal's Rock, and uh, there is a tremendous victory ceremony. So, uh, Norgal's Rock is one of the tours, it's actually the first tour of uh, Dens Morris. A uh, big rocky hill rising up out of the marshes, some sedges growing off of its sides. Uh, there's a settlement, uh, a dwarven town, uh, with stony dwarven blocky architecture, strong structures, um, around the outside of it. Um, and then there are some entryways inside of the tour and within are the, the inner halls and uh, what you, we would think of as these, you know, grand dwarven great halls and other areas of prestige and uh, dwarven hill craft, yes. And um, all of Norgal's Rock is gathered for this. Uh, this is a monumentous occasion. Uh, they have, they have, and you all have, 
uh, defeated Clan Axwort. Uh, so not only have uh, have the Swamp Dwarves struck down a long-standing foe, uh, they actually broke off from Norgal's Rock some generations back, um, but this is also a blow against the forces of the Mer Queen, the uh, mermaid lich who is bound in slumber beneath her water castle and whose dream state permeates the realm. Um, you all are heralded as champions. Uh, everywhere you go, uh, people want to talk to you. They want to, um, you know, they want to give you hearty dwarven embraces. They want to shake your hand. They they want you to like, you know, pat the heads of their children and bestow onto them whatever favor or glory or arcane power is flowing through you all. How do you guys respond to these um, uh, multitudes thronging around you? Uh, quick question. Uh, uh, is it a city or is it an actual town still? It's n technically not large enough to be considered a city. Okay. Um, it's certainly one of the major settlements of Dreckengrim, but it, uh, population wise, it would be considered a town. Okay. I just want to make sure so I know if I need to have Drake I panicking or anything. Because <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't do good in cities. <laughs> I think it's size wise about on par with like Grenadoa or Oldenmark. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. It, the population is in, you know, the, the thousands. Okay. So he'll be all right, not so the tens of thousands. All right. So he'd be fine then. I just have to say to all those things that you just did Captain Knox is not having any of that patting babies, <laughs> kissing, you know, <laughs> blessing people. Um, although if anyone approaches him with like masked one secret signs or whatever, uh -huh. he might be more open to that, but you see no secret signs, but you do hear mutters here and there. Mm -hmm. Oh, that one there is not so quite a grim one. He, uh, remind me who, uh, obviously other than Kivish, who speaks the Dwarvish tongue? Ooh, uh, I think it's Lycar. No, no Lycar. Um, what about I, you? I know Drake. that Harley did. Yeah. Harley did. I Drake doesn't. Okay. Drake doesn't. Oh, okay. Nope. Okay. My languages are Elvish and Common. That's it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. So, uh, Noxiqual is not a big fan of the, um, the touchy-feely socializing. What about the other three of you? Uh, Drake's going to look for someone who can help him find the, the Swamp Queen's family to send those bracelets back if she has any remaining family. Mm, mm, mm hmm. You, uh, you'll be speaking with Orgrim. Uh, companion that has been with you for some time now. Uh, the most prominent member of the Emerald Mages, which is a very small enclave of dwarven swamp dwarf mages here. Um, and uh, a, a lore, a man of lore, really. And uh, he'll be talking to you about this. And um, he shows a bit of, of uh, sympathy for for your perspective on that. I, she was not always as we saw her. That was after she became, well, embittered even further. Uh, the poison that the Mossbeards uh, inflicted upon her through that attempted assassination uh, further twisted her heart and uh, she turned to the darker side of the Mer Queen. But that is not the only side of the Mer Queen. <laughs> This one on its beds. This one is hoping to return these elves to that one's family, if she has any remaining. Yeah, he pulls out the bracelets and shows them. Ah, that is good of you. Good of you to return that. Well, before she be before she got in league with Dirge Tor and uh, the Mer Queen necromancers. Uh, she had her own lair out in the swamps. She was the Swamp Queen, after all. Might be that we could send a, a missive. We'd have to do it cautiously, though. 
this one would agree to that. Yes. Um, so he uh, he talks to you about a uh, uh, you know a f known in a vague way uh, layer of the Swamp Queen. It's uh, he gives you a, a rough idea of its location. Mm, let's see if I have any immediate information I can tell you about that. We've got we've got Throne of the Swamp Queen. Fifty-year-old dwarven woman, left breast and right foot missing due to the druid circle of Mossbeard sending a viper to assassinate her. Foot and breast were bitten and badly infected. Um, he gives you some half-grasped rumors as to where the throne of the Swamp Queen might be. Who's to say? who is tending to that gnarled swampy stump that she used as a regal chair. But uh, if there is enigmas to be unraveled and lore to be gleaned, I am your dwarf. This one would then hope that I could, this one can pass these to you to pass to her remaining family. Aye, uh, you may entrust them to me, Drake. I'll see to it. This one is thankful. Uh, he's gonna then hand over the bracelets and I'm gonna remove them from my inventory then. Perhaps we can send a bird of some sort. Uh, I wouldn't encourage any of our fellow dwarves to go trekking out there, not at this time and considering all that has transpired. This one would offer my own, but he is not trained enough to deliver messages. Hey, and swamps are a mucky place. For those not uh, accustomed to this landscape, it can be a bit treacherous and uh, at the very least boggy. This one agrees. I want to speak with you later, Drake. Uh, now is not the time, but I will get back with you. This one will be around. Well, what of Lycar? What of Kivish? How do you feel about being welcome and uh, embraced and everyone's talking to you? So, well, Kivish is naturally uh, leading all these people. He just promised a bunch of things to and took away from there. And actually, he, I mean, he'll, he'll, you know, he'll respond to the adoration, although this is more attention than he's usually paid. Uh, his main goal, though, is his own clan and also the clan leaders as he is trying to, you know, form a new clan, which is something mm. that, that he, he expects to do without too much opposition. It is a very noble dwarven thing to form one's own new clan and, and start off in, you know, the, in the tradition of Gundred, whose mm -hmm. title I forgot. Gundred the... Uh, what was she? Gundred the... Hmm. Okay. Sure. That uh, historical Red. figure, Gundred. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, you were speaking of Gundred Mithrilian. That's right. She was a Mithrilian. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But yes, to strike out to form a new settlement that will, you know, further the seeds of dwarven kind sown across the kingdom or all well, the land, really. It's not really a kingdom. Uh, mm hmm. Sure. Well. Uh, indeed, there is a long and prestigious history of foundings of dwarven clans, and in fact, a lot of dwarves seem to, well, just kind of get off on this idea of clans and sub-clans and the whole, like, hierarchical structure of dwarven society. Um, the problems usually come in when, you know, people do things too quickly and brashly and they don't want to follow the rules and dwarf, dwarves like things to move at a slow pace and with a lot of consulting and uh, right. drinking and brooding upon these things and uh, citing old uh, historical anecdotes and the law books of how these things are done properly. But when it all comes down to it, uh, it's certainly uh, a, a dwarven tradition. Um, so you are, you're speaking of this with, We'll call them the remnants of Axwort. Um, yeah. It's a little awkward, as you would imagine. Uh, there's not there's not too many of them. Have we written down in an exact number? I don't think that we have. You were going to have us roll percentile and then multiply that number or something, but I think you just said it was like 
like something around a hundred and then like three times. I always feel a bit bad because sometimes there are these wayward details and in my mind, I'm like, it's hiding somewhere in a previous session. If I could go back and watch all this time. I seem to remember it was like a hundred soldiers, 80 or a hundred soldiers. And then like three times that many civilians, I think was, was the, the rough figure you gave last time. Oh, that's not I, what I, I could be wrong. At all. I don't remember any of Lower, that. Lower, might, might have been fewer than that. Ah, uh, um, why don't you roll? Why don't you roll two d twenties, uh, and right. we'll say that um, five percent of those numbers are uh, combatant worthy. Of just two d twenty or two d twenty multiplied by something? Just two d twenty. Okay. So, huh. uh, 38. Got 19. All right, I am going to make a note about that. Uh, okay, so we have 20. All right, so let's go. Um, we're going to call this Kibish's uh, clan formation. Uh, so we have uh, 38 axe fort. Remnants, um, and then uh, five percent of that is going to be not a lot. Uh, well, we'll say two. Yes, two that are uh, veritable combatants. Bear in mind, the majority of the combatants uh, died. Most of them fought to the death in stubborn, uh, you know, rage-filled dwarven hearts. Um, but not every single militiaman or soldier perished. 5% of 38 is 1.95, so thanks for rounding up. <laughs> Very nice. Um, so you are speaking with them. Uh, it's, you know, it is what it is. They're a bit standoffish. It's a little tense. It's a little awkward. But there's no fighting, and they're just happy to be alive. Uh, are you speaking of your beginnings of your plans with your own clan Urzvamp or anyone else for that matter. Absolutely. Uh, his own clan is the first one he will bring this information to and then following them clan Alder and then the other two great clans. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you will say you get, you get that iron in the fire and you're stoking those coals. Uh, you've, you've, you've put your word out. You've gotten You've gotten a better response than what you anticipated. Um, you, ex you anticipated probably get a mixed response. Yes, uh, dwarves are always hesitant to change. Uh, but maybe it has something to do with this moment that is like now is your hour of glory. And so you're getting more support than you anticipated, which that's a good thing, I suppose. Uh, Lycar, tell me, what, if, what about you? What is your demeanor throughout this? Um, I think Lycar is just going to take it in stride. <clears throat> He'll... You know, he just he's gonna be polite, you know, he he gets That's along with the dwarves. Yeah. Checks he, uh, he's kind of used to being a loner, you know, being hunted down, but mm -hmm. he kind of enjoys a little bit of attention. Mm -hmm. So it's pleasant enough for Lycar, and uh while these are not exactly your people and you may not understand everything they're saying to you, um, but it's it's an it's a, a really a incredible moment for you. Um, excellent. Um, and there are other heroes amongst you all as well, of course. Um, there is a chieftain of the Half Greys, and there is Orgrim Half Grey, and there are the Fingard, and some other notable soldiers who were, you know, honored by their valor and prowess in the battle. Um, so you all receive this hero's welcome. Um, and as I said, this is over the course of a few days happening here. Um, then these, the victory ceremony properly begins. And um, it's taking place inside the Great Hall of Norgal's Rock. And it is, uh, I'm imagining a spacious hall with vaulted uh, ceilings, art, uh, arching columns, uh, banquet tables laid out. There are um, the chieftains, uh, dais, there is a, a performer's dais. 
um, there is a, uh, we'll say sort of a shrine area that is uh, adjacent to it. Um, a dwarven architecture, you know, cut geometrically from the stone. Uh, it is a swamp tour, so bear in mind, there will be some a bit uh, swampy bits hanging down here and there off the rock. And that's not to say the dwarves don't give a, uh, a bit of a caring hand to it. And uh, well, for those who live in this area, there is a certain natural beauty to these uh, uh, mosses and swamp sedges and such that are interspersed amongst the stony craftsmanship. Um, there is much drinking already, uh, and more than is common even for dwarves, yes. Um, the victory ceremony begins with the tribute to the fallen. Here we all of our brave kinsmen, ye courage unbroken by calamities, honor like stone and shields of old, never shall forgotten be. And there is a great uh, moment of, of hush and silent awe for those brave dwarven men uh, who fell uh, at the Battle of Dorge Tor. And many tributes are given up and many a cup and wineskin are raised and, you know, uh, war hammers are clattered against shields and uh, helmets are being beaten like bells. Um, there are dwarven trumpets and there are drums being beaten and uh, it's altogether a, well, a, a, a moment of dwarven solemnness, a touch of melancholy, of course. Uh, it's a sorrowful moment. There are tears being shed. Uh, beards are wetted with the weeping of, of fa families and uh, wives now left widowed. Um, but a great tribute is given up to those who fell in the battle. Uh, do you all have any uh, thing in particular that you do here? Any interactions? Any any additions to this? Uh, all right, you are you are in stunned silence. And you give <laughs> so your toasts, uh, you raise. Yeah. Yeah, and join in the singing and uh, generally, you know, participate. There's, there's not a whole lot right now of, like, maneuvering to go on, unless Noxiqual has some trick. I feel like I could do a major image illusion, maybe, that uh, perhaps could be kind of a depiction in the... In the the air above us, kind of, of what happened in a sort of nobler light, if you mm -hmm. will. Maybe a performance mm -hmm. uh, of some sort, mm -hmm. which I'd be happy to roll if there's something to do with that. Well, uh, what is the image? I'm thinking um, noble dwarves, you know, the, I'm imagining the soldiers that came with us and basically they're marching, you know, do very uh, patriotic kind of like imagery you know with the symbols of norgal's rock mm -hmm. nothing too specific i don't want to insult them i just want to give them a mm -hmm. you know sort of image with the music okay so using illusory magic you invoke an image of uh dwarven warriors Spectral and you dwarves, yeah. uh -huh. uh most excellent so um, you do not, in fact, include a depiction of a Mithrilian being really stubborn and sitting on a pit until it disappears? <laughs> being buggered by the... I mean, what? <laughs> or dwarven soldiers being crushed to death by a boulder rolling through a tunnel. That comes later. That's Act 3. <laughs> <laughs> uh, excellent. Uh, yes, uh, let's see how people react to this. Uh, make um, a performance, performance check. Yep, figured. Do a thing like at the Oscars where they have the people we lost in this year, but with Avery and Harley. Does the spell give me advantage or anything like that that I should know about? You do uh, have inspiration. I do. I'm not going to use it necessarily mm -hmm. on this. Just, just a straight roll. What do you got? I got a 13. 13. Okay. So uh, you make this image, and the dwarves... Uh, 
they they give you a positive response to this. You see a few looks that seem a bit confused. Um, there may be a couple of of people that give you a grimace, like, a, why are you doing that here? And uh, but by and large, most of them give you uh, like, oh, ah, or some are even moved uh, to tears at this image, you know, going along with the, the chanting. Uh, so that it, it, it went over well, yes. Yeah. The next portion of the of the victory ceremony is a sacrifice. Oh yes, a sacrifice in tribute to Nyarlathotep, the wandering king, he who helped the the dwarves of Norgol's Rock before there even was a, a Norgol's Rock, back when they were from the northern lands. And the old god of the mountain went silent after the war of three dooms, but it was the wandering king who helped lead them down into the swamps where others said the dwarves could not live. But indeed, they did carve out a new society here, and they have found favor, though a bit of a tenuous sort. And, uh, well, we all know that the great old ones have their eerie ways about them, but surely this is much better than the silence of the old gods that are no longer with us. And they sacrifice a uh, hearty boar and goat and cast them into a uh, roaring brazier, uh, you know, sacrificial pyre and uh, tributes and honors are shouted in dwarvish and uh, another tongue which seems to be of a strange intonation. Any interest you all in this? Yeah, what is that strange intonation? <laughs> what languages do you speak? Probably not that one. Um, okay. Uh, just just common and dwarven. Okay. So there's a lot of Nyarlag, Norlag, Hagiak, Halakal, Karyakal. It's a pretty standard sacrifice. Sacrifices are a very common thing throughout the world. Noxiqual has respect for the old ones more so than oh. the gods, but he doesn't follow them, mm. so he's not too interested. So the, the strange... yeah, Drake's not gonna be interested in that either. Mm -hmm. the, the strange sounds are just like old one words. Mm. They are indeed so, okay. dwarves themselves okay. uh, chanting something or another as they are committing and offering up this burnt sacrifice. Cool. Mm -hmm. Well, I, yeah, I imagine Drake is not particularly keen on such a thing. No, he, once he sees the sacrifice, he's just going to leave the hall mm -hmm. and go find like a small little area off to the side and just meditate. Okay, so you I'll leave, maybe you, you get a couple nasty looks from some dwarves that are like, you know, as you're leaving at this you moment. You might just go outside at uh -huh. this point. <laughs> right, and you, you, you ignore that and you go and you have your own moment of silent contemplation. Well, the... uh, if it's okay, I would follow Drake when I saw him leave. Okay. And maybe we can do a little scene at some point. So the two of you uh, don't have any particular interest in bearing witness to the sacrifice. Yeah. And the, uh, the next uh, thing to come about is the honoring of the heroes, which is certainly includes you all. In fact, um, the... Um, what would we call this? The the champions of honor are indeed um, well. You are called uh, Kivish and Company, and Noxiqual and Crew, or even the Stormbringers. These are the names people are the titles everyone is calling you. And um, the the clan chieftains, um, uh, Clorton Alder and Fullerand Halfgrey and Dane Mithrilian and other prestigious members of, uh, of Norgal's Rock um, have you approach the dais and uh, your names are shouted out and you're each you know, given these titles, you know, Noxiqual, the Fell, and you know, Lycar, the Storm-Blooded, and uh, Kibish, uh, Druid of Dreams. The long-winded. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they probably give him a bunch of titles just to uh, to play into that. Uh, Dr uh, Drake fell, the walker in shadow. Um, speech, 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 speech. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can say, 
I was born a long time ago in a <laughs> bunch of a stump. <laughs> Tony Fez area. <laughs> oh my god. All right, hair. so um, each of the three chieftains of the three great clans uh, present your party with a, uh, a tribute, a.k.a. treasure. Uh, so let's see, first we have uh, Dane Mithrillian. Dane Mithrillian brings forth, or I mean, he himself does not, but the, uh, the bearers of the treasure bring forth a, a small chest. They open it up and inside it is glittering with uh, dwarven gold to the tune of 1,000 pieces. Uh, aside from this, there is also oh, a... Oh, real quickly, that's party loot, right? Yes, party gold? Yes. Okay. Just yes. the truth. What's mine? You guys aren't here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, technically, that's true. We're not <laughs> I thought we Nox came back for yeah. the calling of our names. Yeah, this is a di different uh, part of the ceremony. Yeah. Um, in addition to that, there is a Warhammer. It is a Magic Warhammer plus one. It is made by Mithrillian Smiths, and it's a pretty uh, good-looking hammer, it is. Um, next is uh, Clorton Alder, the older, white-haired, longest beard in Nurgle's Rock. And um, he, uh, he comes out. Um, he first... Uh, unveils a, a box that contains a beautiful, large, glittering, multifaceted emerald. Um, and this is a prized emerald of Clan Alder, and it is worth 1,000 gold pieces on its own. Um, Coming in on eBay. <laughs> in addition, uh, there are two potions that he gifts you all. One is a potion of superior healing. The other is a potion of heroism. And last but not least is Falarand Halfgrey, um, who uh, you know has been most appreciative of the Stormbringers since you all first got involved in the goings on in uh, Dens Morris, starting with uh, the recovering of uh, Orgrim Halfgrey and everything that was going on with the Lizard Folk tribes. Um, he presents to you a shield, which he calls the Shield of the Bugbear Chief. And uh, he says this is something that was recovered some time ago against the Bugbear uh, clan. Um, it serves well enough as its own shield. Uh, it is a magical shield in which uh, if you use the shove action, you make a shield bash with the shield. And um, not only do you have the knock them over or push them back, you also deal 1d6 plus your strength modifier and damage to them, bludgeoning damage. Um, in addition to the Shield of the Bugbear Chief, uh, he presents to you a ring, a magic dwarven ring, which is set in with tourmaline gem. And he says whoever wears this will have um, resistance against the bitter, cold, and whipping icy gales, even that of magic. So it's a ring of cold resistance. So these are the, uh, the the great treasures that are gifted upon your party, and uh, many tributes and toasts are raised in your honor for the extraordinary and nigh unbelievable feats uh, that you all pulled off at Dirge Tour. I am pleased. Speech! 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 <laughs> Speech, the dwarves are chanting, speech, speech. Jerry's going to shadow step out of that at that point, <laughs> right off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> I look at Lycar. You know, if we don't do it, he's going to. And Lycar will just stand and bow. <laughs> it's kind of, hey, yeah, thank you. Well, when I first heard that there was going to be a Very problem with those to the east <laughs> and when someone i think it was orgrim told me that there were trolls that were uh, and then well that was the point where i knew that something was going to have to be done and where my heroic 
comrades and I uh, to get involved, and uh, two hours go by, or however long. <laughs> So he's he's still he'll, he'll drunk, find the track. The other half is sleeping. Yeah. He'll, he'll he'll find the the <laughs> main track sure. eventually a couple of times. Actually, it's probably then, a fantastic so. thing. I imagine dwarves like they put a lot of stock <laughs> into whoever is the most long winded. It's like for the best dwarven literature of all time is like who wrote the longest volumes. Whoever can <laughs> successfully incorporate the most tangents into one speech and still <laughs> tie it back at the end. Oh my uh. god. So, I so. and it is a long and endearing dwarven tradition to try to like to try to write the longest grammatically correct sentence possible. I take silence, please. Let me have taken silence. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, most excellent. So uh, after the uh, the honoring of the heroes, um, there is then a great feast. And uh, really, all of Norgal's Rock is here. Uh, the feasting is tremendous. There is a multi-course um, feast that is just being consumed throughout the extent of an uh, you know, entire day, and it's going to go into the next day. And they've got all kinds of uh, swamp fare from uh, different types of uh, meats and game to uh, snails and clams to odd boiled swamp roots. Everything has these spices and herbs uh, laced throughout it. Everything's like got butters and creams. There are um, well, like winter berries that are garnished on the side. Many a dwarven ale, many a dwarven wine, many a dwarven spirit. Um, they've, got, uh, they've got mead that's produced in Horncomb Lodge. Um, they've got, um, you know, stuffed uh, mushrooms, stuffed all kinds of mushrooms, pickled resin uh, roots. <laughs> they've uh, got uh, uh, a, a roasted... dish that originated as a joke because eel and ale in dwarven language rhyme. <laughs> eel ale. Um, there is a uh, uh, mutton and roasted beef from Sumner Field. Um, there's smoked fish from Grenadoa. Um, there's whatever strange things halflings eat from Tarot Town. Uh, so the whole thing is a, um, a rollicking feast. Um, the crew of the Storm's Eye arrives. Half-mate Kobe the Lion is very happy to see Kivish. Oh, Kivish, uh, we've, we've been worried about you, but you're still alive. <laughs> nice I, call. You too. I have not, I have not yet oh, had uh, about occasion to meet Tanyon. We were less worried about Noxiqual. He can hold his own, but Kivish, oh, who knows what you're going to get into? Canyon drinks alone for now. <laughs> oh, yes, he does. Well, um, well, along yeah. with the crew of the Storm's Eye is a new member. He is a shorter fellow, if you can call him a fellow. He is a goblin. And... Um, well, he is actually wearing a minstrel's clothing, maybe a halfling cut. And um, he's got himself a pretty fine looking hat with a feather in it and a slashed multicolored uh, livery. And well, he is a dandy fellow. And uh, he carries with him a wood harp and lyre and flute. Hey, <laughs> my name is uh, Pockerith. Uh, pleasing to meet you, Captain. Pockerith. Pockerith. Strange, where did you come from? Well, uh, I'm uh, originally from the Smirky Reels. <laughs> you probably haven't been there before. Not, not too much to see. Never heard of it. It is a fine place, although a little bit too alkaline for my tastes. But the, the land there is wet and squishes beneath the feet in such a lovely way. Oh, yes. I saw I got started off making music it was. When I'd be young and I'd get a nice squishy sound going in the mud with one foot and oh, then to the next. Well, you can make all sorts of wonderful rhythms like that. Kivish looks at Noxiqual and then back at the goblin and says, ah, <laughs> you are going to love this one. Oh, yes, I've already written a number of tunes in tribute, not only to Captain Noxiqual, but even to you, Kivish. Uh, 
Oh, yes, about the fallen Avery. I've heard many things. Wait. You just travels that fast, huh? Apparently. We've Far been here man. for some time. You're the That's one that true. was gone. True. Well, I'm quite interested to hear some of these songs of yours. Perhaps it will help pass the time on the ship when morale uh, is low. Well, I'd like to perform here. Do you think you could arrange that? Sure. Hey, I have a performer here. Can we put him on stage? I would put him on the list. Whatever you like, Captain Knox. Aye, right. there. All yours, Parkrith. Oh, yes. I feel the best when I'm on stage. That's really uh, when I'm at home. All right, but you best do well, else you're off the crew. <laughs> oh, well, uh, um, I hope to, to make you proud and uh, maybe liven things up a bit on the voyages. Indeed. I've always liked water. <laughs> uh, that'll be all for now. Pleasure to meet you. Indeed. Talk I to you look later. forward to seeing okay. more. Bye for now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, he, he, he kind of awkwardly fades out there. Um, indeed, there are a number of uh, bards and minstrels, um, including the Tor Stompers, a dwarven company that includes minstrels and uh, actors, uh, overall dramatic company. And, uh, you know, they play out some uh, yeah, traditional dwarven um, uh, odes and uh, tales of the days of yore when it was a, a life in the hills and the mountains. Um, they do their, their honoring and their tributing to the dwarves. Um, and everything is interlaced with a bit of bodiness in a true dwarven fashion. The world um, was young, the mountains green, no stain yet on the moon was seen, uh, etc. Uh, wonderful things of that sort. Uh, Parkareth, the goblin bard, uh, he sings a couple fine tales. Um, I've actually got these here. And I'm not going to sing these whole things to you guys, but I, I, I do at least want to uh, to read them out because I think they're fantastic. Yeah. These come from a fellow who goes by Parker the Bard on my Discord channel, and he writes these things from time to time, um, which I think is really outstanding. Um, so these are some... No, actually, The Ballad of Avering is written by you, Adam. Yes. And then the, the new one is by Parker. So I've got these two. All right, so first is the Ballad of, of Avering. Now, Parkereth could have learned this and he's performing it, or Kivish is performing it. What do you think is more uh, suitable? Well, so Kivish wouldn't be so much performing it as like explaining a blow by blow that takes hours of what actually happened and then just would coalesce as a bard song from that. Uh huh. All right, so. It will, uh, you'll do that, and meanwhile, Parker is there with like his little parchment and quill, like and scribbling stuff it, down. Yeah. And then the troll did, uh, yep. So he's, he's, he's composed a little ditty, uh, the Ballad of Avery, or actually, as it's called here, the Ballad of Avering. As Parkerith is known to do, he takes words and he adds little letters and sounds onto them and twists them a little bit. Uh, Okay, the Avering was not wavering. Even as the troll even as the troll bore down, the wicked cackling, crackling, ragged thing sought to smash his crown. His head stove in, his body rent. The moss beard nary cared, for in his eyes burned fire bright to see his allies spared. Though this one hardly knew, the elf who turneth to an elk, his immortal spirit surely rests within the welkin. Into a bag with his last part, one half a char red bone, upon his final journey by a fellow druid born. Within the groves of blackthorn trees that servines do frequent, so it be that druid's tree shall stand ere permanent. So upon this eulogy, the Norrell's coins were spent, among these trees shall Avering now be ere permanent. Ooh. Ah, yeah, ah, here, here. And if you love something, 
Let it go. Now, this God. is Parker's tribute to Kivich's new plan, his new life path he's going to be taking, which <laughs> does include him uh, splitting with the, with, the, with the party. If you love something, let it go. Let me tell you. I, I, I'm going to try to do this in the goblin voice. Oh, God. <laughs> do it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> for you, Asper. Let me tell you. of a fellow who likes to ramble a bit. But don't tell him I made this poem or he might throw a fit. This man's name is Kivish and he's a druid of dreams. He wants to turn into a spider so big it make you scream. With the help of Mr. Morpheus, he can cast amazing spells. Although what he really needs to do is uh, not talk about other females. Now, I know what you are thinking. Why talk about this guy? It's a good question to ask. And really, as you say, Goodbye. You see, Kevish is leaving the group, and he'll very much be missed. The fact that I can't go with him has made me very pissed. But I wish him good luck in serving his good, and I'm sure he'll do great. I hope to meet him again. So farewell, Kivish, from your favorite crewmates. Ah! Okay, so... Uh, Parker is the bard, uh, the goblin minstrel, no less. Uh, performs these. Uh, the next performers to come up on the stage are a pair from Sumnerfield. Yes, indeed, there's a human by the name of Carterock, and along with him is a half elf named Robin. Uh, though I don't know if Robin participates in the performance, but Robin is still uh, the traveling companion or ally of Carterock. He appears a strong, silent type tonight. Mm. Carterock Hockness is the fellow's name. Uh, Adam, what do we see with this with this character? So, what appears in my uh, thing right now, my my icon on the screen? You see a guy, a human, a man. Uh, all credit to Reddit user Cobblehoof for that artwork. Uh, who is clad in heraldic finery, uh, featuring his arms that he bears as being a knight. So he is a knightly type. But right now, he, he's not clad in the armor and weapons of war. He's got one of those fancy bag hats and you know, a nice, nice brooch on his cloak to look all shiny and proper. And he's wielding a cittern rather than a sword and sort of standing there not really knowing like he knows what he's doing because, uh, well, he's still not sure quite how he got here at least from where he was earlier. Is he supposed to be performing? Indeed. Carterock is one of the minstrels that was employed to perform at the victory ceremony. Then, the dwarves thought it would do honor to these guests from across um, Drakengrim, these humans and elves, to have you performing. All right. In that case... Uh, He's going to put put together on the fly a little set, uh, beginning with Another Night by the Red Fire's Light, which is an original composition of his own about traveling bards and their stories to kind of introduce his works. And uh, then he's going to jump seamlessly into the lively ballad, uh, halfling ballad, known as A Skirmish Near Shinshiv, which is a freedom fighter anthem about the halfling rebellion that is currently occurring. And then finally, uh, he, he's, he's going to settle upon the Lay of Gundred and Hendrik, which is an old dwarven ballad about their first expedition back to the north, led by Gundred Mithrilian, and how it ended faithfully and tragically. And of course, this is the, you know, the, like the, the real money of the, uh, you know, sadness inducing and, and, you know, wistfulness known among all dwarves because he's mm. among dwarves he's gonna end with the thing that's gonna really pop the crowd the biggest mm. uh and a, a fantastic closer there um so just to pop a little lore nugget there um he's referring to gundred mithrilian um so do you all remember drowned tour yeah you just kind of went by it when you're on the way to adder's tour where the lizard folk were uh, it was the one that used to be a silver mine. It used to be called Silver Tor, but it got flooded out badly and the crew in there died. Um, so 
south of Drown Tor, about a half mile south of Drown Tor, is a hillock that has a monument to Gundred Mithrilian. Uh, she's a dwarven warrioress. So this is a statue of a dwarven woman in armor, and she even has like a, a an axe going into a stump. Whole thing made out of stone, and uh, she's the best ever known, best warrior woman ever known from Norgal's Rock. And she, in fact, led an expedition into those. Uh, I think they're called the Torings. These like fr no, not the Torings. The northern mountains, the frosty, frosty mountains of northern Drekengrim. And this was about two centuries ago when this happened. And uh, she did not return. Like her party went on some adventure to whatever location or dungeon, and they just did not come back. Um, and her husband uh, eventually died of a broken heart. And um, his final words, the final thing he ever spoke before he passed away, is he spoke of a dream that he had that um, the frost had melted and it was spring and Gundred came home to him and like into his arms and then he was no more. So uh, that's the the, uh, the inspirations for the final ballad uh, given by Cardarach here. And um, after the performance, you're, you, you receive applause and you kind of you know filter back into the banquet and you and um, uh, Robin, who is a spry half-elven fellow, now have the chance to meet with the Stormbringers. So you're all you're all there together now. Not taking any visitors. <laughs> <laughs> well, other than Drake, I don't think he's. I think Drake's just pretty much moving about, trying to find a nice quiet area. <laughs> I do have a couple things I want to take care of too, but we can do this. Yeah, I, I know Noxaqual had some some particular, somewhat pressing business. Let's let's do no. Let's do uh, all right. Carter Rock. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Mm. How you choose how you approach. Well, well, he approaches like he approaches any problem, head on and with knightly bearing and, and noble stature and uh, perhaps a little bit of scanning the room to see which person looks the most like a Noxiqual, whatever a Noxiqual is. Um, Noxiqual I finally... Finally settles upon Lycar and walks towards him and says, yeah. uh, <laughs> "There is, there is an entire, uh, Bro. Uh, yeah, like an entire town full of hairy four and a half to five foot bearded guys, <laughs> <laughs> and then there's like a head that stands above that with an eye patch on, and he's a human. <laughs> huh? Probably that guy. <laughs> Wait, there's the entire uh, crew though. Yeah, so, that's you true. Know, it's that's true. Yeah, the the crew the crew of the storm's eyes there. Surprised he didn't come for Drake. He's got the bird on his shoulder. Surprised he didn't come for Kobe. <laughs> so oh, like he's impersonated me once or twice. I have been told there's a pirate captain among the lot of you, and I see that among the lot of you there seems to be a pirate captain. He kind of like you know, mimes the eye patch and the bird and like, just kind of like tries to focus so that they like squints. So they all appear to be on the same person. <laughs> Which one of you is Captain Noxiqual, as they say? Like her, was like the lot of us, you make us sound like we are some scoundrels from a back alley in Sumner town. Mm, some of the field like scoundrels you. wouldn't have done what you just did. However, I am looking for those who are a bit of a scoundrel's thought. They make the most money these days. I got half a mind to point him to Kivish. That's him there. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, he'll talk him to death. <laughs> no, probably just go, oh, never mind. I'm just going to go back to Sumner Field. <laughs> I, I clash my mug with the uh, line car. <laughs> and it would be, this would be your pirate captain. I and mean, who are you, boy? Hi. How old is Noxical? Uh, he's, you know, an age that I have on my sheet here. That's totally not zero. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I always pictured him um mid twenties. Oh. Yeah. I am no. 
boy. In fact, I am a few few winters your senior, am I not? Still, though, you are sung of by the bards. You are one of greatness who has made for himself a fame and a fortune. And that is why my seemingly now mute associate and I have come searching for you. For we wish to join your ranks. Yes, that's true. Uh, um, my name is Robin. Uh, I'm not much for words. I, I don't speak dwarven even, so... Is it dwarven? Dwarf dwarf tongue? Uh, thank you, though. Uh, I'm I'm Robin. Good to meet you. Robin and this bard here. Crowd of Rock Hockness, of Rockness, at your service. I am of Thunderfield, but Rockness is the honorary ancestral home yes. of my family. Indeed. Tell me, you want to join my crew? What I... do you bring? I bring my um, skills. I, I will have you know I'm a skilled scout and treasure hunter, and uh, I'm interested in the opportunities that the Storm's Eye uh, presents to me, and I hope that we can be of benefit to each other. So you're a skilled treasure hunter. Yeah. Tell me, what's the last treasure that you hunted? Well, the last thing I was hunting for were a pair of winged boots. And I haven't found them yet, but the clues that I gathered have led me here. And he looks down. I guess no one's actually wearing them. So Drake's not wearing them. He just yeah, has So them he just leaves it at that. He's like, the clues I found have led me here. Um, I found, uh, from what I found, there was a fellow named Avery the Druid wearing them. And I just heard a tribute <laughs> to the fact that he perished. And you believe you have some claim to these boots? Well, we'll see about that. <laughs> I understand. I understand. I need to prove myself. I, I, I don't have any delusions that I, I don't have to. Good. That's a good attitude to take. Yes, so you're reminding me of another short-lived thief that I met <laughs> not too long ago. He stole the boots. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm surely more cautious than that one. Excellent. Well, like are you? I've yet to have know. a trap blow up in my face. These fingers are nimble, and um, my no, uh, my years. my tactics are sound. Did not the other one claim this as well? <laughs> All right. Let me ask you a question, though. This is your trial to join my crew. There's a bubble of darkness in front of you. You hear the sounds of an army of skeletons doing something on the other side of it. Your captain tells you that they're readying attacks. What do you do? You know that there's an enemy on the other side, though. Close, that you could stop from getting away. I oh, ready my really... blade. I stand at the ready. I do not move forward. And I sing the song of skeletal doom. This was not your test. Not your tongue. <laughs> yes. Okay, well, that's a really good question. Um, in that situation, I think I would weave. He quiets down a bit. Illusory magic, creating a mirage of myself, running out of the darkness. So they would loose their arrows at this false image, thus wasting their attacks. And then we would uh, hit them and retreat back into the globe before they had re uh, re knocked arrows. You can join my crew. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I won't let you down, you... promise. Um, I know how to use discretion. I like that you have some magic. That'll come in handy. I've learned a few tricks over the years. Um, yeah. Pardon me while I talk to your companion a second. You, card. You seem like right. more of a knight wandering around, singing songs, fighting the good fight. Why would you seek to join my crew? We are not the most reputable of folk, though what you say about our acquiring valuables is true. Have you heard a song of a knight? A knight errant is not a knight at home, and a knight at home is a knight in a castle. 
I have no castle, no lands of my own. I have but a sword and my songs to seek my fortune. And fortune it is I that I I don't want to die before this is over, so could you narrow it down to 50 words or less? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Yes, are you related to I am, I am a knight errant. Let me that means knight in need of things to fill my pockets. And I have heard that you are particularly adept at filling your pockets with things of value. And so I have come to you to ensure that I can do so myself. And I have a few questions for you. To test you, Aye. as I tested your companion. Aye. You have a choice between saving the life of an innocent who is nearby, close enough that you could aid them, or completing the mission which requires you to let them die, but it would bring great rewards. Which of these choices do you make? Who is the innocent? Is this a trick? No, there's no trick here. Perhaps the innocent is someone that you know, perhaps it isn't. In this case, does that matter to you? Well, I should like to prove to you that I am quick enough to do both. <laughs> That's your answer. Sounds like you know how to cast Word of Healing. <laughs> you might. <laughs> hmm. Uh, there's also talk of uh, pirate activity on the rise in these coasts. So I think it would be a benefit for you to have a bolstered and strengthened party as to uh, disarm, destroy, or otherwise dismantle your rivals. I'm not opposed to having strong members of my crew. I'm just not convinced of your strength yet. Tell me. What is your strength? Enough to slay a manticore, to be sure. Mm, just a manticore. Mm. Not just a manticore. A manticore who believes he's a sphinx. Sorry, he would have said a sphinx. He would not have said a manticore. <laughs> I, I was about to say, I was yes. hoping that you'd say that, but I was like, I can't. I wasn't there. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I half that made it into my, or that was in my mind, and only half of it made it out of my mouth. Yeah, uh, I got you. Mm. So you faced the terrifying beast. That I did with my sword and my song, my steel in my hand, and the fire in my heart. Do you get seasick? I don't think so. Mm. Well, let's say this for now. I am looking for some new crewmates who will fill my crew and follow my directions as we go on our quests to find this Holy riches. Grail. Ah. The riches that we seek. I will give you an opportunity to prove yourself, but if you betray me, or the trust that I place in you, you will not live to make it back to shore. You accept this. He begins to draw his sword like up to the point where, you know, it would be <laughs> not quite a faux pas to draw your sword inside and, and like holds it out and then sheathes it and says, you have my word by the steel of my blade. I figured that you were swearing on it rather than like trying to pull it out. Yeah. Yeah, boy, it's still. Mm. You know, do you do that? Do you, do you do you swear upon your ancestral blade? Yeah, yeah. That that's why he like pulls it part way out, but you know, not mm -hmm. far enough that it could be construed as like attacking anyone. Okay, but I don't I don't think you have to do the, just the halfway thing. Um, if you want, you can you know swear upon the blade of House Hawkness. As long as you're um, not swinging your, it around. Your, yeah, your father gave this to you. He's back in Sumner Field, as your family has uh, been growing as of late, though there's a lot of pressure on the family now, too. Actually, um, in fact, he will specifically say, it will be a joy. The no. fact being a reference to the fact that the sword is named Joy. Mm -hmm. uh, do I know his family, out of curiosity? Hmm. They make are a history, Make a history check? Yep. Yeah. I've got a little bit of history. 
That's a nat 20. Oh. Uh, plus two, so 22. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, you've heard of you've heard of Hawkness. Uh, they are a minor noble family, pretty minor. Uh, they have a manor home in Sumner Field. Um, the current um, elder, the eldest, yeah, the the head of the family, we'll say, is Carterock's father, whose name is Galrock, and he is most known for uh, uh, for building, yeah, to stone masonry, and uh, as an architect. Uh, he built a new tower on the keep uh, there at Sumner Field. And um, yeah, they are not incredibly well known. Um, as, you know, they're not a, a great house, but they have their place and they are up rising. Uh, cut, yeah, they're coming up. Uh, also, they originally are from uh, the prior capital of Dreckengrim, the city of uh, Hawkness. So. Rockness. Yeah, I'm getting a little confused now. Rockness is the name of the city. Yes. And Hawkness is the name of your family. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. So it probably originally arose from some confusion similar to that. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, actually, I do like it. I just had like a, whoop, a little blip moment. Okay. So uh, Rockness was the once upon large city and capital of Dreckengrim. It was laid to waste. Uh, so currently the uh, the capital, or at least the the seat of highest administration in the realm, is Sumner Field, which is actually a small city. Uh, but even so, that's the biggest settlement in the whole um, in the whole realm. Uh, so that it's a family that they trace their roots back uh, a while for you know for a number of years and generations. But they're not uh, long standing uh, royal blood or anything of that. That's fair. I was more interested in whether they've ever done business with. The captain. Mm. Um, if you bought stone, perhaps that that about is the extent of your knowledge. Um, uh, and let, let me actually be a little bit more specific. What I mean by that, that is like the extent of the lore, not due to your lack of knowledge, but just due to the fact that this family has not really made a lot of news ever. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I guess we could do one other one other small thing. Now that I think about it. Uh, Carterock's grandfather, he was an adventurer. I don't know, he, he clearly wasn't of too much note, but this sword got passed down from him. Apparently, his grandfather used this sword a lot and like it got dinged up quite a bit. I don't think your grandfather won much honor, though. Your father kind of spoke of him as a ruffian, kind of a careless, brute sort of guy. Gotcha. Well, um, when he swears upon the sword, that does seem to uh, appease Noxiclaw. So he says, very well, you may join my crew. But I'll be keeping an eye on you. I like how I walk over and he goes, yes, if you break that trust, you will be chasing that sword down to the bottom of the ocean. And... I need to give like Lycar a position on my ship to like enforce shed. It, he gets <laughs> a point across. Uh, taskmaster. I feel like there is a whip cracker. Um, quartermaster or first mate. This is the usual Bo- one. Boomer. I think boomer sounds like a good title. <laughs> Um, uh, bosun's more like uh, repairs and yeah, maintenance. It's not bosun. I, quartermaster is one. Um, yeah, I, I think it the would first fall under, mate. Well, yeah, first mate's a first mate, but I think it would it'd fall under a, a, a either a quartermaster or a bosun because a quartermaster is like in charge of materiel, and a bosun's more like a. The XO might do it because the XO is separate from the fir- first officer. I'll watch Black Sails again. Right. I'll yeah. I'll also, yeah. bear in mind, Noxiqual's ship is not like this massive galley or anything. It's right. It's a sailing ship. Wait, you mean it's not a Nimitz class aircraft carrier? <laughs> no. Aw. I mean, it's it's a pretty good ship. I mean, it's worth, you know, 10,000 gold. It's yeah. It's good. It ain't no rowboat. No. That's for sure. All right. So, um, it seems that there is uh, some new opportunities here for your party. So that's a nice thing. Great. And, and I, as uh, things always go... Uh, it all will get proven once uh, 
especially you know, once a, once <laughs> initiative gets rolled and <laughs> traps get encountered and danger characters die on their second session. <laughs> oh god! Uh, and where is Nick? By the way, has no one? Heard I from don't him? know. I just double checked um, Discord. He's still not on. You got his mm -hmm. phone number? I do uh, not. No, knocked out his internet wherever he is. I don't know. Let me see. Cool. I yeah. Um, okay, so let's let's continue going here. I'll see if I can find his phone number and text him. He is, if I recall, the same coast as I am, so he could be affected. I'm going to take uh, two minutes and use the restroom. Oh, okay. So, um, uh, Robin, he does not have any uh, family name or heirloom blade to swear upon. He's a half elf. So that always puts uh, heritage into a bit of a blurry, fuzzy area. Um, but he, you know, he told you all the things that he told you, and he seems to be uh, a skillful fellow. He seems very dexterous, very agile, and uh, the way that he talks, you can tell that he has some real experience with treasure hunting, with traps, with uh, various manners of subterfuge. So. Seems like he would be a worthwhile addition to your party. Just keep a good eye on him. Yep, I am looking forward to uh, seeing what he can do on session three. <laughs> I don't. I don't have Nick's phone number. I thought I had everyone's phone number, but I guess uh, his... you don't have mine. I know that for sure. Okay, we'll we'll get that taken care of yeah. later on. I can um, send it on Discord. So these the, these celebrations are just going on and on and on in, in wonderful dwarven tradition. Um, there are there are some proposals of marriage. Um, uh, so hopefully not uh, involving three very old, very young looking women. <laughs> right? Hopefully not. <laughs> Darling, I found you. I've traveled so long. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, let's see, of Clan of Clan Roggen, um, there is a proposed marriage for Kivish. Uh, they have a, um, a lovely daughter who is of good stock, and she would uh, make a fine wife and companion for you, Kivish. Um, you, let's see, uh, roll, um, roll a, gosh, I don't know if this would be history, it's going to be with advantage, whatever it is. What would you It would use? be a history. I, I yeah, would okay. May roll a history check with advantage. All right. Yeah. Uh, let me just very quickly pull up Kivish's sheet that I didn't have open for tonight. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Okay. History. With advantage, that is going to be a 19. Okay. You are familiar with House Roggen. They are a minor house beholden to Alder, as is, as oh, is okay. your clan, as is your clan. Um, uh, the girl here, uh, whose name is uh, uh, Spiley, uh, she uh, is, a, is a winsome lass, a uh, sweet girl, uh, dedicated to her clan and to her family. She was ill when she was young. She had a, a, a bad fever, a sort of swamp fever that nearly took her life. Um, and so it, it had some residual effects on her. Uh, sometimes, you know, you've heard, like you remember when you were a bit younger and you were with the, the rowdy guys, uh, they would poke fun at her, you know, kind of behind her back, saying that she's, like, kind of touched in the head or a simpleton. Uh, you might have had an interaction or two with her. Hmm. You wouldn't exactly call her an idiot. Um, just well, so, a, so sim a simpler... Kivish yeah. is 125. Kivish. Kivish is 125. There's a chance that he was the one who cured her of that disease. I don't know. Oh, that would be very interesting. Um, so she has a, a great affection and esteem for you, and maybe she oh even looks to you as someone who uh, uh -oh. represents oh, no. healing. Oh, no. and... <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, Kivish, as before, 
may quite possibly have figured out how to reproduce via spores and doesn't really know what the whole like what what female attention means and why people around him have been expecting him to make a bigger deal about it uh so and uh, be, and also Marexa maybe oh including her um uh, he he's going to be thinking about uh what the implications of this marriage would be in terms of he's trying to form a new clan what kind of uh what what kind of capital and what kind of personal personnel rather resources uh this would bring we're actually mm -hmm. gonna cut you she's gonna cut you man <laughs> he's gonna build her a pool in the new swamp they make down in miracle on jaw crazy psycho x man that's all i gotta say um okay so amongst clan alder um the this beholding clan Rogan is uh really known as one of the more practical and pragmatic clans um they are builders they are uh responsible for repairs for upkeep for administration uh for they they do a lot of work just keeping the functions of the clan they're kind of a you know a uh what, what do we call these base stones uh what's the word i'm looking for here uh we'll call them ground yeah, they're like a foundational stones, mm -hmm. the mortar um, that Corner helps stones. out. Cornerstones. Mm -hmm. Cornerstones. Yes, there we go. That 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 helps out. Uh, that helps very much keep the you know the greater clan together. Um, so this is hmm, a little bit different than Kivish. Perhaps it balances you out. So what do you think? A winsome bride, a sweet a sweet lass. A uh, practical and pragmatic family bond. So would it mean any extra uh, hands to help carve out their new settlement? Sure it does. It okay. But it would also mean a loss of gold because you have to pay a dowry. I think dowries go the other way. There, there's some weird one where you have to also pay there's the There's a dowry and a bride price. and they usually The bride price, that's it. Well, and they usually like both are intended to ensure that the bride has money in case, basically, yeah. in case the husband goes out to war and dies. Uh, I don't know what the what the custom is here among dwarves. Because the custom among uh, swamp dwarves is an exchange of gifts. Um, yeah, and the gifts are to be appropriate of the uh, we'll call it the standing or uh, rank of the family. Uh, you are are convinced that of uh, all of these minor clans within your great house, uh, Rogan would be probably the most reliable in terms of uh, finances and wealth, and they're very well administrated. Look at you playing politics, marrying <laughs> for you know power and... So it does seem a, a smart uh, marriage. It does seem a smart yeah. marriage, especially for you considering uh, building a settlement. Also, again, she is not way older than she looks, and kind of evil because of evilness. Uh, yeah, I, I don't see any reason why he would decline. What if what if Marexa? She will be seething, <laughs> oh, seething. <laughs> does she want her to marry him? What or does she want him to marry her? Rather, what's <laughs> She's just your side girl, okay? She's not marriage material. The the, the bonds the bonds of uh Fay mentor and a uh a, a not a patron, but a whatever the You're gonna have a lot of nightmares. <laughs> uh, maybe she's into it. So would you prefer a Fay bride instead? Uh why was one offered? You you wouldn't consider Marexa? What I don't get. How does that work? That that doesn't make sense. Like no, are they? You've well, never, you've never heard of mortals and fey coupling. Oh, I mean, Kivish hasn't. Well, Kivish has risen quite a bit in power and in honor, and I think he would certainly be able to uh, make a husband of himself for Marexa. 
But it, it appears that you have no affections for Marexa in that way, despite the fact that she is most possessive and jealous of you. She's a valuable ally and has been. I, I like to think he's been making her aware of that, but I, I didn't think that like it was that kind of thing. <laughs> I think she's hinted that like every single interaction <laughs> I've ever seen. I think I've seen two interactions with this, and she's hinted it in both. <laughs> and by hint, I mean banged you over the head with a frying pan. Yeah, that was the first well, interaction. He, 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 I just think Kimmich uh, playing this out in his head. And he's like, "Oh, does that what that meant to be?" That oh, that's exactly what it would go down. That is it? So, is Kimmich prepared to make this decision right now, or should you be like, you know, I'm going to give this some time? That sounds like the kind of thing you read, like in a chapter, several chapters down the line, and like, oh, so that happened. Interesting. Okay. So later on, we will hear about whether Kivish went with the uh, the practical and secure and traditional marriage, or if he went traipsing away with the swamp fae. The psycho X. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, very X well. Uh, he doesn't know what together is. In her <laughs> mind, it doesn't matter. You see... Uh. You're mm. her, you're her ex in her mind. <laughs> um, and Lycar as well receives a proposal of marriage. Oh snap! Yeah. Oh golly. Um, you oh, are God. you are approached by a minor clan known as Stonehound. They are beholden to the great clan Half Grey, and um, the daughter. Of this clan, her name is Tylen. Tylen Stonehound. She. How can I explain Tylen to you? One might confuse her for a boulder. Uh, she is a veritable earth elemental. Uh, you hear her walking up like the sound of uh, thundering hoof beats. Uh, but she is one of the most promising uh, fighters of, in, of all of Norgal's rock. And there is a rumor out there that no one has ever beaten her in a wrestling match, man or woman. Hmm. Her father says that when she was young, she stumbled into a location of elemental power out in the swamp, and she was um, imbued with earth magic. Uh, it's a little taboo amongst dwarves, but he feels that he can trust you, and he says that she has sorcerous blood running through her, and she has the ability to like invoke earth power. And that is what's causing her to be so incredibly strong. And he says that she would make an, um, uh, a wonderful, uh, it would be an amazing match for the two of you. He also adds in a nice little detail and he says, she is very young for a dwarf. I know that could be a little strange between humans and uh, uh, half elf, excuse me, and dwarf, but she is only 50 years old. Which is a dwarven years. That's not that old. Yeah, what are they living in the 300s? Yeah, 300, maybe 400. <coughs> so, you know, in like in human years, whether it was she's like 18 or 22 or something. You should do it. You should unite the, um, unite the, the storm with the earth. You should be quiet. <laughs> 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 so, uh, so Taylin is there. I mean, you're you're looking at her. She's there with her, you know, with her mother, her father, a few other of the uh, the, the the kinfolk of uh, of Clan Stonehound, and um, it's not that she doesn't talk or she has like a you know a, a rock headed personality. It's that she actually restrains herself because she can very easily like unleash. And you know this because you have grown up as a sorcerer. 
Well, like her, I mean, obviously he's a little fascinated by the uh, sorcery element of her, but he's just not in the dwarves. <laughs> um, um, so he is going to make some BS excuse and you know, he's going to be as polite and as respectful as possible, you know, saying, I'm not going to be around. I may never come back here again. Mm -hmm. Her, uh, her mother implores you consider the, uh, the fruit of your coupling, what you could produce together. We have tried to, uh, get Orgrim Halfgrey to train her. Uh, but she does not take well to book learning, and uh, she has a different way about her. I don't know who else would understand if not you like her. Can I, like, sweep in and, like, provide, like, the tag, you know, help him out here? <laughs> yeah, I just, I, I just be like, good madam, I do not think this is Truly, what she would want. I, I, I am flattered and honored, but there is more to marriage than just having similar experiences. I must agree. I have to say that it would not be fitting for Lycar to marry at this time, as my ship. Requires his full devotion. Mm -hmm. Do not agree, Lycar. Yes, the ship. <laughs> the so ship these calls. the ship calls these oh. uh, these members of Clan Stonehound. They uh, they accept. You know, her her father says, "I I understand your way and your tradition is not ours." And uh, thank you for hearing our offer. Yeah. Like hers is, you know, he's polite as can be. You know, he's trying not to ruffle any feathers because this is a good place we can always be welcome at back here if we ever want to come back and hang out. Hmm. As as they are taking their gracious leave of your presence, uh, the mother says, "Just think about it. Just think about it. It will be on my mind for quite some time." <laughs> <laughs> he forgets about it later that evening. <laughs> um, Noxiqual as well has no. a, a uh, how would we call this a, a pretendant? Yeah, a a potential suitor. Uh, you are, you know, you're with your crew. You're in your cups. Maybe at one point you have to go to relieve yourself. When whenever you like somehow finally get a little bit isolated, uh, you hear this voice from behind you. Oh no. <laughs> Hello, Hudson. You I turn, yeah. you turn, and you see a solitary dwarven woman. Though at first glance, you might have confused her for a male dwarf because she has facial hair, as dwarves can have. Yeah. I've had my eye on you for some time, Naxiqual. Aye. Lust is is simmering in her in her gaze. She's a bit of an older dwarf, a rough look to her. Say, and who might you be? My name is Hagra. And what can I do for you, Hagra? Oh, many things. Uh, she straight up tries to like grope you, like fondle you. If she she, she tries... seems like uh, she's had a bit to drink, as everyone has, and is like burning with lust for Noxiqual. That's fine. I have a way to handle this. As soon as she like tries to like put her hands upon me, I'm gonna cast suggestion on her. Do okay. a Jedi mind trick. This is not the Captain Noxiqual you're looking for. Kivish, though. <laughs> Um, is much better looking than me, as I'm sure you would agree. Ah, uh, dwarven men don't do it for me. Well, this is magical suggestion. Well. Uh huh. This is her so, attempt to withstand it. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, DC seventeen. Okay, okay. Uh, so she's telling you how 
she dwarven men don't turn her on and you've noticed that um pretty much of your whole party you're the one who's the most um uh out of place here at norgal's rock uh the dwarves don't really know what to think of you you're a bit of a out uh what outlier uh very strange even for humans yeah you're an odd card for them no also you're a more of a grim soul so it might just be that they're like apprehensive to like accidentally get turned into a wraith or something that has happened <laughs> yeah <laughs> drake still remembers that <laughs> But Hagra, no. Uh, she she straight up tells you that she is not turned off by your dark ways or your eye, and she's really into it. Uh, you said it was a DC 17? Yeah, and if it fails, then maybe Noxiqual will have a little fun. Who knows? All right, so um, I'm just going to give her a straight, just straight roll. Yeah. With she is suggested by you, and she says... Uh, well, now that you put it that way, <laughs> those mushrooms grown out of his ears do look tasty. I think you should go find him. Perhaps he might be more receptive to your advances. That was a great <laughs> suggestion. Thank you. Of course. I always try to help those who are fans. Uh, but she, she, uh, she. Before she goes, she tries to give you a, a long hug. Thank you so much. I make sure to like hold my pout, you know, like anything that's of value to me, just because I don't trust anyone. <laughs> All right, so she hangs on a bit longer than you would expect, and after her tender embrace, she yeah. goes seeking out Kiddish. Hello, <laughs> handsome. <laughs> She will pursue that for the next eight hours or until something... Kibish, you, you hear a dwarven woman mutter, There goes Hagra. She always likes the weird ones. <laughs> hey, no kink shaming. You know, it's what, he whatever her thing is. He doesn't pay heed to that voice unless another voice approaches him. All right, so Kibish, uh, you are rebuffing Hagra as well. I, I can I can only assume that the rest of you just hear, uh, uh, Miss, you know that you have a little something, and then like a, uh, uh, you know, an offended shout, and then a sound of someone storming away. <laughs> no, she wouldn't storm away. She suggested for like oh, the next right. eight hours. She's very attractive. Then in that case, you just hear. You hear the low rumble of Kivish talking in the background, and <laughs> next morning he's still going. <laughs> she's she's a captive audience, man. Ah, true, true, <laughs> very true. Um, um, Orgrim, Orgrim does meet back up with Drake. He wanted to speak a little bit more with Drake. Oh, so Drake didn't get any marriage proposals. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Uh, no marriage proposals for Drake. No. Um, okay. <laughs> you're you're not as known yet amongst Norgal's Rock. Okay. Uh, you are still a, a, a very much a newcomer. Um, you came in really in the middle of the uh, Omen Mox, so few dwarves know much about you. I mean, they know who you are now. Yes. Yeah. No. No. Because but if, there's if been there hasn't been up, any uh, build up. There's no build up yet. Because if one did come up, Drake was just going to shut us up right away. <laughs> Should have sent her after Kobe the lion. Damn it. <laughs> he wouldn't even respond. It was just shut us up and gone. Kobe. Uh, Kobe would have done it. Kobe, you look like, where's Kobe? And he is uh, sloppily <laughs> drunk and making out with a dwarf woman who. Nice. Uh, she seems fairly run of the mill, an average uh, dwarven lass, but he is just enjoying himself. Uh, <laughs> Quite it doesn't get shortly evolved. Quite it. fully. <laughs> so, All right. Drake, uh, I'm so glad that we had success. I didn't know there there was a po point when all hope was lost for me, and here we are, drinking in tribute to our success. This one agrees. There were points where this one feared we have lost as well, uh, and. If it wasn't for your party, I I would have been lost in the belly of the beast. Uh, 
it was my darkest hour. This uh, one must thank you as well for the potion that you gave. Without uh, it, this one would have also fallen. Yes, well, that is one of my specialities, one of, uh, of many, uh, that I'm, I'm happy to have uh, been of service and aid. And uh, maybe one day your party will uh, count amongst its ranks someone who knows proper curative magic. This one would hope so. Ah, yes, it's a wonderful thing to have at your disposal. Uh, I've been meaning to speak with you a bit when the time was right. Uh, you seem rather fervent about your god. Eh, Dinosus. Yes, this one follows Dinosus. This one believes Dinosus still exists. This one even uh, just recently had a vision of Dinosus. I've read a little of this god, and he seems a rather uh, informal sort. He is. Dinosus leads from the front, not from the rear, as many uh, generals seem to like to do, as this one has seen. He'd rather be among the rank and file, uh, not with the lords of Hard. No, uh, this is befit a wine is reeking off of his breath as he's talking, <laughs> by the way. This is most fitting for the things that I've read as uh from what I understand, he was not born a deity, uh, maybe a demigod. He was born from a mortal mother in Bazagon. This one has read as well. This one has read. He his... rose up from the common ranks fighting as a gladiator. Yes, he rose up and earned his right to sit among the other gods. Are you familiar with the land of Nepurna? Is Drake familiar with that? Um, yeah. I mean, you can roll a history check if you'd like, but yeah. even we'll without roll. rolling, you've at least heard of the land of Nepurna. Yeah, so I'm Drake would have heard Let me do a history check then and see how, I, how much yep. you would know. Okay. So I do have a negative one. That's one. <laughs> He's just heard the name. Okay. So all you know is there's this realm called Napurna. It's like the Northlands. Uh, it's it's not too far from Drekengrim, like in the world. Uh, yeah, cold northern place. This one has only have heard is heard of it in of its general location. In Napurna, it is said that they worship Dinosus as well, uh, but they call him by a different name. Uh, they call him by the name of Cord, which has some meaning in their old uh, frozen tongue. Uh, it escapes me at the moment. They even, some of them believe that he is of northern blood. This one has heard of him being called Cord as well but has never heard of him being of northern blood. Uh, I have never been to Bazagon, and that, that doesn't surprise you. Almost nobody leaves Drekengrim. Uh, it's not safe to sail out of Drekengrim. Um, Fury. Yeah. Fury. Um, a lot of refugees and immigrants go to Bazagon, uh, and that's been happening for some time now. Um, you've heard of this, you've started to hear bits and pieces of this like doom war or war of three dooms that happened in the somewhat recent past of Drekengrim. And this is odd because you've maybe heard rumors of similar in general, in a broad stroke, similar things happening all across the whole world. Uh, Bazagon seems to be this like, um, uh, hub of civilization, like this last great standing civilization. And um, I know you are not a fan of being inside of a big city, so you probably haven't, at least not through your own will and volition, not, spent much time there. Well, other than getting on the boat to come, yeah, he's he will remain out of a like, even doing that, he was not happy. Yeah. Had to go well, actually, the, the ship that you got on was not on the main island. It was oh, at okay, uh, never mind, Seagate. Then. Seagate is a small town island. Okay. Uh, which is at, like the, it's a big central island that is covered with a metropolis. 
And then there's a whole archipelago and outlying islands. Um, but Bazagon is like full of people from across the entire um, world. And she would have at least if you look long and hard enough, you'll even find people that are like a rare thing. Like you might see a, um, a dark elf or some kind of a monstrous race. Uh, they're not too common, but uh, uh, it's not too uh, far-fetched at all that uh, Dinosis, or AKA Kord, <laughs> would actually be a Northern. He just was born in Bazagon. Many refugees go there. Uh, but I guess your, your history check is really low. So you don't, I don't think you really have any like um, uh, further insight or probably not even a, uh, a, a, a hypothesis of your own as to what's going on in the world at large. No, he, Drake wouldn't. I, he's pretty much spent his entire life within the temple. Sec yeah, secluded, sequestered even. Mm -hmm. Um. Orgrim asks you, you know, some more questions about, you know, what's it like where you're from? What, what is it like in Bazagon or this uh, Seagate uh, as it is? Is it this different one, than Drakengrim? It is. This one, though, did not leave this one's temple as often as others did. And this one did discover many things that this one should not have discovered. Oh. At the temple. Uh, secret? Dark secrets? This one believes so, and left shortly after this one's own master left, after discovering it. Strange happenings? Queer no. occurrences? No. Odd no, no. unfoldings? More of betraying one's faith. A betrayal amongst the members of your monastery? Of the highest order, too. What is the name of this place in which you grew up and trained? We never gave it. Uh, Sunderwave no. Temple. Sunderwave Temple. Sunderwave Temple, yeah. It's, uh, it's a it very my... small rock of an island. Uh, with a tiny little settlement in this temple is the main feature, and it's not too far from Seagate. Mm. Uh, Sunderwave Temple is dedicated to the god Dinosus. Yes. Uh, was this betrayal anything to do with a god by the name of Atalos? No. Well, hold on, I gotta double check the god's list. Talos the Reaver, you say? This is a private conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta double check the. Are you, uh, well, uh, Nox, Paul, are you, you? Tell me, are you wanting to like butt your way in? I mean, I feel like I want to talk. I've, I've been wanting to talk to um, Drake for a while. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, uh, they can wait. I can talk with, to him after. Uh, Talo... Get 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 Knox Qual in. You you have an interest, so bring him in. Okay. Well, I want. I'm I'm coming to find Drake, and I overhear that last little bit. Yeah, and you're like, you just said what you just said. It. Uh, there Atal there Atal was the reaver. There was Atal a war. This one knows of a war between him and of Dinosis, but I do not believe it was directly related to Atalos. It was more they have. Corrupted Dinosis in his own teachings and their practice. Uh, I heard uh, there was a is it a corruption like we are uh, exposed to here in Drekengrim? A, a severing of divine connection, a, a, a curse, a maldiction laid across the land from a, a fell villainess. I do not know if the more queen is responsible, but we have many have lost their connection to Dinosis, and it is possible that she is the cause of it, or there is another force at war. I have, as I said, this one has said, had visions of Dinosis, and this one's master in the halls of Dinosis, them celebrating his final moments in, bat in battle. And so what your master stayed true until the end. 
and this one prays that this one shall be also able to uh, remain yeah. true to analysis. I don't mean this to is intrude, good. but um, you too, I have something I wish to discuss. Oh, yes, sir. This one you is this. You guys are open. interested in the Noggin Vault. The Vault of the Emerald Mages, I... I I'll give you privy to the library. I that I will. I'll keep my word. I always do. Indeed, Givish and Lycar were also, I believe, there when you made the agreement. So, I will let them approach you. Certainly, certainly. But Drake, I had something I wish to speak with you of in private as well. Once you are available. This one is available whenever. Do you? Uh, Mind pardoning us for a moment, Orgrim? Oh, I suppose I could go and speak with Humberflora and her. Uh. <laughs> he wanders <laughs> away, kind of in the drunken way that you do. That's fine. Drake, I have uh, been meaning to speak with you for some time now since returned from Dirge Tour. I am pleased with your performance and I would like to offer you a formal place on my crew if you would accept it. This one is pensive of it. This one would wish to know what you would want of this one. I would want to know more about the pact you made with our Mutual friend, my patron, the masked one. This one made a simple deal. Mm. Retrieve an item. You, This one was told you would aid to get to it. Indeed, I will. I was wondering, do you have any more interest in prolonging that arrangement, that... Uh, relationship this one will remain loyal to dinosis is what you are asking cannot one serve many gods or pay homage to many gods depending on what purpose that you seek to pray to them is this one respects the other gods but this one shall always remain loyal to, to dinosis of course but on that note, the last one is no god. Can one not serve a lord and still worship a god? That is possible. I, I but would, this one would need to meditate on it. I would liken serving the masked one as more akin to serving a powerful, immortal being. And an allegiance to that is not the same thing as worshipping a god, necessarily. I believe that there is room for both, if one were so inclined. This one understands what you're saying, but this one would like to meditate on it before. Of course. Seek me out when you wish to be open to the mysteries of the masked one. This one understands and this one shall. But as of now, this one will remain loyal only to Genosis. Of course. Her there is an understanding the between the characters here. Though they do have their differences, there is a shared purpose. And uh, particularly, um, Noxiqual has been tasked with retrieving whatever cargo was in the hold of uh, the Siren's Kiss. Oh, yeah. And that's exactly what we. Mm -hmm. to but out but today. but for now, uh, Drake uh, does not have any inclinations towards the masked one. Beyond the you helped me, thank you. Yeah. Oh yeah, He's, totally. Your war yeah. levels can come later. Yeah, I, I do have to admit having that ability to see through the orb of darkness is awesome. And, <laughs> and that would be awesome. But this is completely out of character, Drake. But Drake doesn't know. 
that's part of the package deal. Mm. Oh no no no! We'll we'll get to it. Let's, yeah. let it, let's you, you're let's, really wanting Drake on board. <laughs> I I feel like it would be excellent role play if I could convince him, but we'll see. Yeah. There is a final note that I'll I'll uh, play out here for the the victory ceremony. Um, then we can move on to some other things, unless you all have a. Uh, have something um, else you'd like? I to do, do have a level up at some point from a long rest. Mm, so, okay, so we can do that so, after, though. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, technically, that would have already happened, but it, it's of no matter. We can get to it here in a, in a moment. Yeah. There is, um, you know, lots of people have come to speak with you. So the, the, many you probably can't remember their names or their faces. Uh, it's all a, a, a big, um, uh, lively affair. Uh, but there is one final uh, in specific NPC that comes to speak with you. Uh, he is a younger dwarf. Um, he is not quite as drunk as everyone else here. Um, he has brownish hair. Um, he has the garb of, of a swamp dwarf who gets out and about. Um, so just at a first glance, maybe he's a warrior, maybe he's a guardsman, maybe he is a, a ranger, maybe he's one of the fin guard. Uh, you're not sure, but he has that look about him. Yeah, a hearty fellow who um, goes out in uh, expeditions into the marshes. Um, he introduces himself to you all. We... I would like a word with you all, Stonebringers, if I may have uh, the honor. Very well. Who are you? Like, are you you may so. speak to us. Hey, you... Kivish. It is good to meet your acquaintance. I am a Dignahar Pyreboat. Spell what? that? Are <laughs> you in the <laughs> sentence? <laughs> <laughs> so it's Dignahar Pyre Boat. Dignahar and, Pyre Boat. Uh, yeah, you are, well, at, at least you're familiar with uh, his clan. They are, uh, they're also of, of Clan Alder. In the, they're oh, in the Clan okay. Alder umbrella as well. Um, the Clan Alder family of brands. Yes. <laughs> right. He says, uh, I want to first of all um, I gotta get my accent right here. I want to first of all give you my personal uh, gratitude and praise for the uh, incredible feats that you did at Dirge Tour. I have never heard of uh, a, a a group of or squad of of fighters, not even mages, uh, accomplish such uh, sh earth shattering feats. Something troubles my heart, though. Uh, my father perished at Dirge Tor. That is unfortunate. He died there. And I loved my father. I have had some problems here in Norgal's Rock throughout my limited and young life as of yet. My father was always by my side. The only one who truly believed in me and trusted in me. He is gone now. Uh, instead of falling into the path of thorns and embitterment, I want to do something greater. I want to do something more. I want to do something different. I need to get out of Norval's Rock. I would very much like to join your company. Uh, I am a skilled crossbowman and I will pledge my loyalty and my bravery to your cause. You wish to join the crew of the Storm's Eye, or the Stormbringers? Aye, that I do. Hmm. A few more stops, and we will have an army big enough to take on the Silver Citadel. We keep picking up <laughs> people like this. <clears throat> may have to get myself uh, a, a bigger ship. Ships. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, tell me, um, just wrote his name down. Dignahar. 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 Higher boat. 
Yes. Dignahar Pyreboat. Is there no one else here that would miss you? No other family or their clan? Oh, yes, there would be some, but uh, I don't think they would miss me all that much. Mm. We may not be back here for a very long time, if ever again. That sounds exactly what I need to do. Mm. Well, have you ever sailed on a ship? Do you have any experience with that? Um, a, a bit on river boats. Mm. And on the ocean? No, never. But I could learn, if need be. I, I look him over. Uh, tell me what's my sort of appraisal of his, like, do I think he would do well? Like, mm -hmm. You yeah, know what I you mean? Can, like, yeah, make an insight check. Uh, I can give Kivish uh, history with advantage as well, if you are interested. Yeah, I ask Kivish, do you know of their clan or of this young man here? Mm -hmm. The short answer, please. <laughs> well, uh, he got a, a nat 20 and a 6, so it's a good thing he had advantage rather than disadvantage. Uh, so, yeah, I dare say he does know Clan Pyreboat. Okay, and what of Noxaqual's insight check? Um, it was only a 9. I'm not very insightful, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you're looking over, uh, from what you can tell, Noxaqual. He seems a, a, a strapping dwarf. Okay. Kibish. Um, uh, Pyre Boat is uh, another one of the minor clans in the uh, the great clan Alder, along with your own. Um, they have a bit of a bad reputation, sort of a uh, wild child and wild children and bad boys around these parts. Um, though good fighters, uh, hot-blooded ones, tough ones. Um, you know of Dignahar here. He and his father were soldiers in the, um, in the, the Clan Alder squad, um, specifically crossbowmen, and Clan Alder is well known for its, for its crossbowmen. Uh, there's another detail that you are aware of. Uh, this Dignitar here, he was in a bit of a controversy uh, a few years back. Uh, he was accused of thievery. He was accused of a theft of an old relic. It was a relic of Zamankare. Zamankare, the Forge Master. Right, this is right. the god that the, one of the primary gods that the dwarves used to worship. Um, they even called him like the the Lord of the Mountain, but that almost no one worships him anymore. Um, maybe Drake could tell you that in Bazagon, this god is is worshipped. Actually, this god is in Bazagon. Oh. Um, oh, that's he, right, in the Great Caldera. In the Great Caldera, yes. Yep. He is the primary god of the Xanthos throne. It's one of the main factions of Bazagon, one of the one of the great four. It's a clan of uh, dwarves and tieflings that have had this compact for many, many, many years, uh, many generations. Um, so there was this amulet of obsidian that was lifted out of Norgal's rocks, vaults, okay. Uh, Dignahar was implicated in this, but he was never proven guilty. Uh, so he didn't guilty. suffer uh, consequences uh, in a like he he didn't suffer any penalty. They didn't like you know put him in jail or flog him or execute him or anything of that sort. He was never technically proven guilty. But everyone kind of like looks at him like with suspicious eyes. There are those who do. Uh, defend his name and his honor. His father primarily was the one who always stood by his son's side, uh, yeah. but kind of a ruffian sort of character around Norgal's Rock, this Dignahar. All right. Uh, he's known to be a trained crossbowman, though. You wouldn't, by any stretch of the imagination, call him on par with what you all can produce. But uh, his fervor is there. I... With my insight, I believe that we could always use more on the crew. I've only got like 15 crewmen, uh, not counting my uh, first mate, Bosun, healing mm -hmm. minstrel. 
So we've got like 20 people and then the special characters. So knowing knowing uh, what he knows about the house, Kivish will absolutely tell Noxiqual, uh, mm, this one sounds like just your type. Excellent. Thank you for the advice. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think we can uh, come up with some arrangement, Dignahar. Meet me on my ship first thing in the morning. I feel... We can uh, start training you, or or meet uh, actually Kobe, my first mate there. Mm. We still have some things to take care of in the city. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So uh, Dignahar gives you a, a hearty dwarven thanks. Obliged, much obliged, and I I look forward to putting some crossbow bolts into the hide of our foes. I like how you talk. I'll clasp arms with him and give him like a look in the eye to like see like what he's made of, kind of. Mm -hmm. He does not wither in the least and gives you a fiery gaze right back. Well, I get the assuredness of his gaze, as I think you said in one of your adventures. <laughs> okay. Uh, so Dignahar Pyreboat has joined with Maybe your actual party, or maybe just as a crewman uh, aboard the, the Storm's Eye. I occasionally do take some NPCs with us. You know, mm -hmm. they can be fun to have along. So, um, unless you all have... Shh! <laughs> 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 all right. I'm having trouble remembering everybody's name here. <laughs> Let me make an intelligence check. <laughs> Well, I, I remember the ones that directly affect my life. I know, I'm just missing. <laughs> You're good. We'll wrap up the victory ceremony unless anyone has an additional um, interaction that they would like to pursue, you know, that, that takes place inside of that ceremony. Let's move on. Move, a lot, move on? Okay, so let's see. Uh, we'll have the Dignahar thing. We'll have the library. Uh, we'll have some stuff with Kivish. Uh, we've got a level up with uh, with Drake. Okay, Drake, excellent. Um, tell us tell us a bit of what what happens at this level. What what sort of uh, power or a new epiphany are you stumbling he upon? He is going to continue along his path of monk. He's the question that was asked with that vision that he had was, um, what is in the darkness? I believe, or what mm -hmm. is the darkness? Mm -hmm. And his answer is everything and nothing. Mm. And he will move up to level seven of monk. So he just mm -hmm. gains a few extra eye traits. And that's it. No level up. No feats, nothing fancy. Like he gains okay. everything, um, everything and nothing is in the darkness. Seventh level seventh level monk? Yes. Uh, so he you gains, actually gain evasion, evasion and stillness and of stillness mind. of mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't get anything. Just evasion. <laughs> yeah, evasion is an amazing ability. Okay, and stillness of mind. You can um, use I have your right here action to, to uh, remove an effect on me, like a charm or frightened. You can remove charmed or frightened as spinning by spinning your action, and then evasion. Uh, uh, I, I take it you've read through it. The yeah. classic uh, rogue monk ability that is incredibly useful against uh, everything from blasts of fire and lightning to anything that's a deck safe for half damage. Yep. Uh, you'll no take damage no damage on a success or half damage on a fail. Uh, my only stipulation on that uh, is if you are immobilized, it's not going to help you. Yeah, so no, if you're, I, if you're I, asleep I and someone drops a fireball on you, uh, well, Drake doesn't sleep; he's always meditating, so <laughs> that helps. <laughs> okay, if you're if you're paralyzed or yeah, or no, I, I figured I figured if he's unable to move, it wouldn't count. Yeah. Uh, okay, so everything and nothing. Um, the the vision that you had was a, a great um, eternal hall. Of of Dinosis, a great hall of warriors, a hall of mead, um, a His mountain a mountain hall. 
yeah, and his master was uh, accepted within the hall as monk, one of the mm -hmm. monk the rank. Mm -hmm. Yes, the the priest who was your uh, your your mentor, your companion, uh, made made his way there. And in the darkness, everything and nothing. Okay, um, you have a further detail of this vision, this next this next uh, meditation that you enter. Yeah, the the trance state that you enter. You have a, a further vision. You see a woman, a warrior woman, with a winged helm of a Valkyrie. She appears to you, and and you are looking over a great uh, a nighttime scene. Uh, it appears to be an ominous valley of gloom, and she shouts into the, the 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 darkening heavens a, a, a booming cry of majesty and and fury the clouds part in in this section you know she she calls and divides the clouds and there is there is a star uh, glimmering shining beyond and she calls down the starlight and it goes into you. And she says, night may fall across the land and dangers and terrors are unnumbered, but you may walk through the shadow and find all that you need and all that you seek, but you must walk with bravery and you must use all gifts that have been given to you. And this one shall and shall always do so. There is a star inside you, and this shall see you through the darkest of places. Drake puts his hand over uh, his chest and he gives a very respectful bow to the Valkyrie as a sign of respect and a bow. Uh, you bow and you feel a, a, a strong touch upon your chin. And she's actually like lifting your chin up and your head up. And she says, keep your chin up. Keep your eyes fixed at the horizon ahead of you, your back straight and courage in your heart. You may face the terror. Oh, you may tremble, but you will continue. Do not forget this. This one shall not. Um, so the vision dissipates, but you feel this star inside of you. This uh, It was a shooting star, right? She brought it down like a comet, yeah? And when you awaken, this energy is just like flowing through you. And um, you you feel like you could walk amongst one of Lycar's fireballs and be unscathed. <laughs> awesome. All right. Um, okay. Let's see. We've got, what, so we got the lab. I'm trying to remember everything we're going to do with library. The crew. Let's check in and see how the crew did with the cargo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, this should I've be pretty got, fast, uh, Noxiqual. Yep, I've got, I've got the table pulled up in front of me. All right, so you were not there, so Kobe the Lion is the one who did it. Uh, he is persuasion? proficient with persuasion. He has a plus two. So roll a persuasion right. plus two. I rolled a nat 20. I'm not even... <laughs> um, so plus two, that's 50% uh, profit. Okay, uh, your current cargo that you had on board the ship was a value of 250. Yep. Uh, so you have just made 375 gold pieces. Uh, so. You do need to pay. Um, so let's see, ship upkeep, and I assume you're paying your crew. Yeah, of course. I All right, not. so 375 minus 165. Uh, is that 200 and... 215? So 375 I, minus 265? 210? 110. 375 minus 265? 165. 210. 210. Noxiqual, you have profited 210 gold pieces. Kobe the Lion brings you great news of much success uh, in the, the, car, the, the trading of the cargo in Grenadoa. 
Nice. That's uh, I'm I'm very pleased to hear that. Um, I know that my trust was a little bit, you know, iffy after the last expedition, the last first mate. Mm. Made. But I think <laughs> Kobe the lion has replaced him and done quite well. Uh, somewhere on board the uh, Storm's Eye, they are giving a uh, Parkereth and a uh, Dignahar a tour, and Kobe. <laughs> Like down in like the the lower hold, like rat's nest, like opens up a hatch, and there's like a guy chained down there in the darkness, like the rat killer. <laughs> and he's like, "You see him? Uh, that was the last half mate. Oh god, don't want to be that guy. Better not fuck up." <laughs> <laughs> that's that's perfect. Par Parker is, yeah, Parker's like, "Oh man, I'm just gonna sing songs. That's all." And uh, <laughs> Dick Dignar is, what have I gotten myself into? All right. Um, <laughs> the library. Yeah. Uh, so this is a you know a couple days have passed. Norgal's Rock is um, um, you know continuing on. It's uh, it's you know it's typical day to day life with a much re uh, renewed energy and zest and perhaps some loot that was plundered out of dirge tour um there's talk of um arranging the next clans meet because they need to talk about things like you know what now we have had this victory but what of the greater war war against uh, uh the Murqueen? also what of these prisoners of war of clan axwar so there's going to be another clans moot sometime soon um but uh you all have been given access uh orgrim is there um, there's a couple other members of the Emerald Mages, these uh, dwarven fellows with the long gray beards and uh, their debates that they have of uh, uh, mysticism and higher arts and uh, philosophies and other such scholarly pursuits. Uh, but yes, the Library of the Emerald Mages, Nagenvault. As well, you have access to... Um, uh, goods and wares uh, that are for sale, magical wares that are they can Excellent. sell. You know. Excellent. Um, so this is like library research, lore, magic shop. You have access to this now under under close watch, but you do have access to uh, uh, utilizing the benefits. Um. Should we do shopping or library first, everyone? Oh, well. You and me, Lockar. <laughs> I wouldn't mind doing a, a wee bit of shopping to see what yeah, they Yeah, everyone, everyone has access. Yeah. Yeah. You can ride our coattails. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just messing. Um, yeah, let's do some magic shopping, then we can get into specifics of research and such. Okay. Stuff. I'm interested. So, um, uh, Orgrim and the other mages, uh, they can consult with you as to the wares. They keep things pretty well locked up. Uh, they have guards, they have wards. It's what you would expect for a, a magic vault. Uh, but he'll consult with you. So, um... Let's see, what's the, going to be the best way to do it? I think the best way is I'm just going to share my screen with you. Oh, excellent. And then you can ask, just... Yeah, if we could request items or if you have a list. Yeah, um, I don't always do this, but sometimes it's nice to actually write out a, a little document. So that's what I do have here. I'll share my screen, and you all can look at this if you have um, other questions or requests or whatever. Uh, let me know. So I've got them categorized here. Can everyone see this okay? Yep. yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, and we have some leftover stuff that we found in our various uh, adventures. Well, I have a bunch of stuff written down here. Yeah. When we fought the... Uh, well, I got a uh, couple the, treasures. Yeah. I have one from the treasure from the Swamp Queen. We have a rod of bone, plus one to spell attacks. Mm -hmm. Ignore half cover, cast enemy dead at third level. 
Uh, yep. So we might sell some some precious things to them. Maybe we'll trade or something. Yeah, three onyx gems, a bone dagger, a walking. I got I got some like weapons that I looted. Crossbow bolts, two thousand gold pieces, a glass bottle of dwarven strong wine, and I have some other treasure from way back when. I don't even know if we ever looted the. Split this other up, but God, I think this is from when. I don't even remember when this is from. Don't don't even worry about it. If it's on your sheet, then you're holding on to it, and yeah. You know. Well, I just wrote it down on my notes. It's like a group thing. It's fit five five hundred gold pieces, a ring of a gold ring, a pearl, a golden ewer. What is a ewer? It's like a little spigot thing, right? Hmm. A, a pitcher. Yeah, like a little yeah. Bit of a spec okay. these, these were all things we found, I believe, in under Omen Mox. Most of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oak of Griffin Feathers. Because we didn't really have much time from Omen Mox, the Dirge Tour, to like do. No, yeah, for you guys to split it. Mm -hmm. A mace with the head of a lantern. Which I believe was a mace of disruption. Yep. Mm -hmm. A scroll of command. Mm hmm. So, I mean, we have money. Yeah, I'm just looking at items and seeing if there are any that interest us. Well, the bag of holding might be interest to Drake. Mm -hmm. But that's 500 gold, so I don't mm -hmm. know if you guys want to help him with the that. The necklace thing of wound closure would definitely be interest to a certain uh, rogue, perhaps. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I do have to say, it's a really good ability. Uh, it requires attunement, the only thing. And the potions, getting some pain potions would be another thing Drake would want to get. I don't suppose that they make uh, rings of spell storing or anything like that. Uh, Orgrim says, oh, a wonderful thing that would be. But you don't have any. I, if I did, I would probably be aware it a pretty thing. Yeah, I'm sure we all would want one of them. Whoa, wait, hold I have on. Heard I know the Silver Citadel possesses such treasure. Based on this list, I know what I want. I totally want a staff of staff of swarming insects. I want a staff that can make staffs of swarming insects. <laughs> you can only do it once, though. It makes sure, a staff. Okay. Yeah. As it's actually charm. it's when it says staff, it's like a personnel. It's like a team members and uh, ah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> they all put their hands on the staff. <laughs> exactly. They've got their uh, their like staff T-shirts with like a little staff logo with a TM on it. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Staff of healing. Let me see. You need to be like a wizard or something to use that staff. Oh, I can tell you about that. Our cleric um, druid. Yeah. Are you all still seeing the item list? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. All right. Goggles of night. Ooh, that's kind of cool sounding. <laughs> they provide dark vision, which you already have, though maybe they extend your dark vision. Mm. They probably give you an extra sixty feet if you already have dark vision. No, no. I'm hoping it would give me a uh, sight through uh, darkness. Ah, <laughs> uh, hmm. That's a good question. I don't think it sees through magical darkness. I think it okay. gives you sixty feet of dark vision, or if you already have dark vision, you get sixty additional feet. Yeah, there's only two abilities in the game that let you see through magical darkness, and well, player abilities rather, I should say. Yeah. Mm, Hex, uh, Warlock, and Shadow Sorcerer. That's correct. The Shadow Sorcerer mm -hmm. can only do it on his own. Mm -hmm. uh, Orgrim tells you about the Staff of Healing. Uh, you can use it if you are a Bard, a Cleric, or a Druid. It has 10 charges. When you hold it, you can expend one or more of the charges to cast one of the following spells. Cure Wounds, one charge per spell level, up to 4th level. Lesser Restoration, two charges. Mass Cure Wounds, five charges. The staff regains 1d6 plus four expended charges daily at dawn. If you expend the last charge, roll the d20. On a one, the staff vanishes in a flash of light lost forever. Have a bit of care if you're going to expend all of its energy in one go. It might just 
burn away in a radiant glare. Indeed. Mm. Let's see here. I mean, there are definitely some good items here. I'm just trying to be... Uh, no, <clears throat> out of curiosity, if I bought a spell scroll, like, say, a first-level spell scroll, would I be able to, like, memorize that spell? So a spell scroll is not to memorize a spell, but it's uh, it's like a, a casting of the spell without using your own spell slot. Okay. It's a one it's a one time use, but it's pretty cool because it's an extra spell that you just get to use uh, for free. Okay, I was just curious if I could add a spell to my spell repertoire. Mm. No, not okay. off of a spell scroll, though. I seem to recall reading that wizards can copy them into their spell book and it consumes yeah. the scroll. Yeah, wizards should be able to do that. Yeah. Um, the spell scroll uh, will also have a set DC or spell attack bonus dependent on the level of the spell. So it doesn't go off of your spell DC. For example, a third level spell scroll comes with a DC of 15, or if it's an attack, uh, plus 7 to hit. Mm. So, I have a couple things that I'd be interested in. They might get a little pricey, though, so we should, you know, determine who has what money, or just buy them as a group and make sure we track who got what, kind of. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, Lycar had mentioned a couple of uh, treasures, such as a golden ewer and some jewelry. Uh, those could be sold. Maybe you already have sold them in, in, here in Nurgle's Rock. For, uh, or you can just use them as you know bartering chips, essentially, because they have that value. Yeah. Here's, here's my thought, and I'm going to just put it out there for you guys. Um, I like utility items over just whatever items. Um, bag of holding. Actually, that's what I was thinking of. I, I, Jake, I did mention that earlier. Those bag of holding good. is a fantastic oh, yeah. item. It's an amazing great item. It pays for itself eventually. Yeah. You need to carry something really heavy. Yeah. My, my only stipulation on bag of holding in my games is that it does not accept uh, living creatures. It doesn't accept creatures. That's you could, totally legit. You, you could yeah, put a, a corpse in there, but you can't put people in there. A portable hole is not a creature. <laughs> <laughs> yep, but uh, that causes... All right, problems. everyone. Same time. Please put the sphere of annihilation and the portable <laughs> hole in the bag of holding. Go! <laughs> <laughs> Universe implodes. <laughs> Um, ring you of have protection. destroyed the universe. <laughs> There's only one ring of protection here, but I know we have one that we gave to Drake. Yeah, I got one. So, right. I mean, like, I'm not super set on getting another one, but it is a universally useful for every party member item. And I would not mind having one. Or I know we have some new party members, but I kind of feel like it would be kind of weird spending our hard earned money to give them something. You know? Yeah, I yeah. think I think the idea is that uh, in the um, transition here that um, Robin ends up with the winged boots. <laughs> Drake still has the boots. Robin doesn't know where the boots are. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's my okay. Feeling. I'm just, I'm just, yeah. just put, putting that out there. No, put because I'm, there. I'm actually thinking of Drake is you know, forgetting. To go back to, um, hold on, I got to the correct name. I want to say, goes back to Orgrim and tries to see if he can get them back to the swamp mage, swamp beard dreams. Those uh, boots back okay. to the, the moss yeah. beards. The moss so, beards. Well, so, uh, but he's going to do it completely on the fly. So that way, Robin has no clue where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> So, on a related note, Kivish, on his way with his newly forming clan, uh, is going to stop by the Mossbeards 
He's going to need some help terraforming part of Merkelon's jaw, if possible. And he also... Okay, well then off. maybe then maybe Drake will hand him He's to Kivish. Drop off half a half of a charred skull. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it, uh, pass along with the skull. So that way they can... The boots actually return to where they belong. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm so, I do apologize to Nick because I know he really wanted those boots. But Drake's being a little too honorable. <laughs> they already were okay. stolen from one person once. They're not yeah. being stolen again. <laughs> I can totally get that. And I, I do feel like Robin will try and like steal them. But like if we see him wearing those boots... He, he, he's dead. <laughs> Drake is going to be pissed. <laughs> Yeah. I'm gonna say other... the dead. It's just gonna cause a scene. Oh, well, that was the other reason I wanted the bag of holding was because sneaking him into the bag of holding, no one's gonna know. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, um, I think all right. that all is quite fitting for the characters, and perhaps Robin will come upon some winged boots by a different means. So, I feel or maybe like he we... can earn these. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Um. I feel that we should all probably have at least 500 gold to spend, I hope. Um, Drake started with nothing because he pretty much gave away whatever he stole from the temple. I personally, on him, he has six gold and six right. silver. <laughs> I'm just going to put this out here. I have at least 500 gold on me. Well, I had 500 gold before we... And I have a copper statue worth whatever, but... Um, Let's let's do some splitting of some loot here that we got from the uh, war chest. Here, I'll do some math. You guys go ahead and. Uh... Well, from before Drake met you guys, I don't think he, he would get any of that loot. So it all have to be from this, from what we just got at the ceremony. Well, yeah, at the ceremony, there's at least two thousand gold piece value. Yeah, there. that's what I got I mean, as well. We're not selling the items that are unique. Uh, the gem, I, I the gem is kind of one of those unique ones. I wasn't sure if we wanted to sell that. I feel like it would be better kept in the emerald mages. It's an emerald, you know. True. So return to the mages. Um, we'll trade it value for them. Does anyone use a warhammer though? Mm, I, I'd be more than willing to give that up, but you know, once again, you gotta sneak it into the emerald mages stockpile. Yeah, and then the other the other one, I think the one I think we should keep is the shield, the bugbear. That sounds yeah. actually very useful. I agree, and I don't know, Kivish, does your new guy use a shield? Uh, he does, in fact, yes. Okay, well, they're perfect. And then the other one is the Ring of Resist Cold. Um, Could come in handy. Yeah, that's another one I think would come in handy. Put in the stockpile for a while. It, no one needs to like wear it, necessarily. So put it into um, the bag of holding. Yeah. So another uh, thing... Okay, go ahead. Card, card comes forth as you're doing this and holds up uh, an elegant lady's cloak in a nice teal or blue color. Uh, mm-hmm. First of all, did I discover between last session or last mini session and now that it's magic of any kind? Well, Orgrim is here and he is well known for his ability to identify magic items. And yes, he, spends a, he spends a bit of time studying it. Oi! There is a, a form of magic in this, a transmutation magic woven in this cloak. It is a cloak of many fashions. <laughs> the wearer who is attuned to it can do exactly that, change its style, its colors, its patternings at will. And yet you've been wearing a woman's cloak this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't attuned to it until now, or didn't know uh, about it. Drake's that. got his ring of... Um, uh, Disguise, so much better than that cloak. <laughs> he completely changes his figure. Good to know. Yeah. I'm sure you can find some usage, uh, some way to uh, make a, a, a wit, yeah. find your way out of a, a sticky situation using your wit and prowess with this cloak. Okay, from the f- first list, do we want to keep the Mace of Disruption? Or do you want to... No, I'm good with, you know, 
So, Maybe yeah, we could trade it for something. Gary's not going to use it, so he, he would not have any problem. Trade it for the or, value. Um, we're going to offer you a fifty percent value on it. Yep. He'll he'll give you two thousand. Okay. Um, do we want to split that up or just trade it for, like community, whatever? I would recommend trading it. Maybe start putting it towards potions and maybe the bag of holding. Or a couple bags so of holding. There's there's two bags of holding. I was actually thinking maybe getting one of them. Or two. Then, yeah, like we both could, of them. Why don't we get both? With so that get, that's a thousand from the maze. So that's still another thousand. Okay. I was thinking about grabbing a sending stone set as well because we could use that to communicate with the ship if we're ever like off the ship. Mm, mm -hmm. Okay. That's a good one. Sending stones. All right. So you've got five hundred still. Uh, do we want to get you on the mace, right? Yep. Yeah. This is yep off the mace. So, uh, do you want Kobe to keep hold of the one, or you just want it to be like specifically on the ship somewhere? I want it to be on Kobe. He's the first mate. He's the one I trust with it. Okay. Um, and you still have five hundred gold pieces of value off of the uh, mace of disruption. Okay, real quickly, the greater healing potions are both two fifty. You want? Should we buy them both or? Um, we've got actually a bunch of healing potions. I was thinking about the potions of water breathing at some point because we're about to go on up. We do have to do that dive, yeah. Met without metagaming, yeah, we do need that. No, I, I, I was thinking about this the whole time. I've been eyeing it, I just haven't said anything. Okay, Please. two potions of water breathing. Which leaves, um, 100. 100. I think I can cast that spell, water breathing. I don't know, third then, level. The only reason I consider having them is emergency. Oh no, you're out of spells. We're trapped underwater and you guys need to re-up. Pop. Yeah, pop it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or Girl, maybe you girl. get dispelled. You know, mm -hmm. you never know. Yeah. That's I think that's a good game. item to have on standby in a, uh, a sailing chapter. Yeah, I mean, if nothing else, we keep it on the ship as emergency... Uh, save your spell slots. We need, uh, you know, mm -hmm. jump in. Okay, cool. Um, who's going to hold on to the potions? Or who wants one and who wants one? Well, who's going to hold on to the bag of holdings? Drake will take one bag of the holdings and one of the potions of water breathing. Okay. If that's possible. If everyone's okay with that. I don't want to jump. Was, that's fine. Um, okay. Like, do you want the other bag of holding? You seemed excited about it. I can hold it if you want to hold it, so long as somebody has it, and we kind of know what's in there. And okay, yeah, right, Lycar, I'll say Lycar has the other bag of holding, and who has the other potion of water breathing? Uh, Drake took it. Drake has one, and who else has the other? Uh, maybe Card. Uh, he'll take it if it's offered to it to him. But I think he doesn't Card's really expect choice. anything from them just yet. Yeah, well, Lycar he just can I join them? Yeah, oh, I think Lycar can, can cast it. Nox has the cloak of the manta ray. You're correct. Yeah. All right. Well, the card is in heavy armor. <laughs> hmm. Why, thank you. I did not expect such a, a gift this soon from you, but I shall yeah, drink hope it that, to never put it to good use. Yeah, that's 200 gold you owe us if you drink it. <laughs> uh, so you oh, have 100 GP worth of credit. Um, so um, Drake could get... 10 uh, shuriken plus one, you yeah, can get that might a second level spell scroll. Or, I mean, we could just pair that 100 credit with money to get something bigger. Or just put 100 additional uh, gold pieces into your next um, purchase. purchase. Yeah, your, yeah, your, I'm, I'm with your that company more. hoard. Drake doesn't really... I. Drake doesn't really like the ranged combat. He can't hit for shit. <laughs> yeah, it's not worth <laughs> getting range. the magic... Uh, ammunition for that if you're not really mm -hmm. specialized in it. I and yeah. and and um, what was I going to say? Uh, in the spell scroll, you would you would name the spell that you're interested in, and then there's a seventy percent chance that they have stock on any mm -hmm. given second level spell That's scroll. Good. I have a uh, request. So this is from going to be for my personal funds. I don't believe in making. You know, the party spend mm -hmm. the, the loot on that. So I have 557 gold in my own personal coffer from just when we split gold up and stuff. Yep. Uh, can I enchant my adamantine armor as plus one magic armor? Mm. 
N you can, but not for this value. Uh, because this is like a uncommon level thing. Yeah. Right. So, and your armor is already uncommon, right? Uh, adamantine is uncommon. Uh huh. I Actually, I take that back. This is uh, rare here. Okay. So it's going to like bump it into the next uh, category of power or tier of power, we would say. Which would be so you could you could do it, but not with that amount of funding. At least okay. Orgrim does not like that idea. Oh, <laughs> that's a tall order there, Noxiqual. Yeah, so it's <laughs> fighting the war for you. <laughs> what you're saying is I should buy a ring of protection for a thousand gold and get a better value. Oh, a ring of protection. Uh, oh, a ring of protection is uh, a very <laughs> wise choice. Okay. Because we have I mean, pl plenty of money. Okay, if you guys like want your own personal things, I understand. Ring of protection is the next thing that I would want on this list because I do get up in personal often, and uh, the higher I can get my AC, the better. You know, I can kill swamp queens and stuff. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh yeah. Uh, F FYI. Uh, for Noxiqual, a adamantine breastplate plus one would be considered a very rare magic half item. Plate. Half plate. Yep. Begging very your rare. pardon. I don't know one armor from the next. I'm just a poor blind shopkeep. <laughs> so, um, no, if he's would... blind, sleight of hand, sleight of hand, sleight of hand, sleight of hand, sleight of hand. Slide of hand. <laughs> oh, th that's why I'm blind. They've robbed me so much. <laughs> Uh, so a yeah, uh, adamantine <laughs> armor plus one would be rated at very rare. It's going to be a pretty penny to purchase something of that magnitude. Okay. Uh, mainly, I was thinking about the cost to enchant it. It's already adamantine half plate, you know, mm. like the enchanting process. I mm -hmm. figured it is a, a separate cost. Um, what match? Uh, what holy symbols do they currently have? Hmm. It's interesting you should ask. You uh, you look at the holy symbols, and they are uh, they're older craftsmanship. None of these look to be too new. Uh, there is a symbol of Zaman Ker, the Forge Master. There is a symbol of Sortiza, the Weaver. Uh, there is also a symbol that maybe you've seen, and maybe you haven't. Make a religion check, and we'll see if this is something you're familiar with. Okay. Oh, that is not good. <laughs> it's Rodelm. Uh, 11. Hmm. You're not sure. It The symbol, just looking at it, what you see is it looks like a shield covered in eyes. Uh, does a 10 let me know? Hmm. <laughs> You're not sure. That's fine. Do you want me to look at it? Yes. This one would be appreciated if you White car, what's this? I don't know. What am I rolling for? Religion? Religion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fifteen? You got it exactly. Uh, this is a holy symbol of Argus the Watcher. Uh, he is a god of uh, protection, of war, of as well as the forge. He's a god that is also in Bazagon. Uh, another one of their great factions uh, is dedicated to him, a faction known as the Argus Legion. Uh, they are their soldiers. They are uh, arena men. They are beast hunters. They are monster trainers. Maybe I said that backwards monster hunters and beast trainers um they have a uh they they have sort of a military function in bazagon uh they also are the keepers of the tower of a hundred eyes argus himself is is in bazagon is a a calcified uh, giant mummy that's wearing this ancient rusty armor. All right. Uh, no symbols of Dinosis, I take it then? 
Yes, you do see a symbol of Dinosis in there. Um, and upon looking at it, you realize it is of dwarven craftsmanship. It, the stylization to it is just different. It doesn't look Basagonian. Um, then I'm going to spend five of my gold to get that symbol. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, you procure the, we'll call it the, the dwarven holy symbol of Dinosis. Oh, I forgot that was even in here. It's good that you should have it. Maybe it was waiting for you all this time. Yes. Do you wear it around your neck? Um, yeah. Yeah, Drake's going to put it on. Ah, uh, a symbol of a different time. Is there anyone else who's interested in, in items here? I am. I was just waiting until everybody else was done. Okay. Just the ring of protection, really, I guess. So, yeah. You purchased the ring of protection? I mean, I'd need 500 more gold. From we have plenty of money. I stopped, you... I stopped calculating at 1,055. And then we have 2,000 from the Swamp Cream, plus we just got another 2,000. So where's my five hundred coming from? I just can you can you, sure tally, can you tally up all of the the gold pieces? Well, I could. Uh, I mean, uh, Dennis, I would, Dennis. it would take a little bit. Okay, um, uh, you just want to fire, fire it off at me? Well, can I mean, I, everyone, can I let me see if I go back the, to the uh, beginning. Yeah, just just fire off the figures at me. Okay, there's a five hundred. This is just gold. Yep. And you then, can you can include like the the jewelry and the golden ewer that you want to sell as well. Okay, gold ring 150, a pearl 100, a golden ewer 75. Yeah. Uh, a crystal shard, and it says a wand, 10 gold pieces under arcane focus. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. We have cloak of griffin feathers. Mm -hmm. That's 100 gold pieces if we want to mm -hmm. get rid of that. A staff carved into the shape of a snake, a staff of the adder. Did we ever have that? Kibish okay. has that. So we got rid of the mace. We got the scroll command spell. I guess we should keep that. Mace has um, nothing left on that. So yeah. Yep. Yeah, okay. Hundred left on the mace, right? Yep. Yeah. From the swamp queen's lair, we got a rod of bone. Mm -hmm. Whatever that's worth. I mean, it's a magic item. I thought. Plus one to spell attacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like a wand of the war mage. I guess it could come in handy. Uh, three onyx gems, 50 each, 50 gold each. Mm -hmm. I don't know if any of this stuff is worth money. A bone dagger, a walking cane, and a dwarven stone box, if they're worth anything. Uh, we have those magical cross bolts, plus two to hit. Only 10 of them. Oh, the walloping bolts, yeah. Uh, magical item. Yeah. You want to keep those? You want to give them to Dignahar? Yeah, we just got that dwarf that had. Huh? Um, coin 2,000 gold pieces, a glass bottle of dwarven strong wine. I'm and probably keeping that, maybe drinking it. Yeah. Boots, <laughs> boots of striding. Okay. Whatever the, they are. It's a magic item. And then we got from the last battle, we got a thousand gold pieces. Uh, the Warhammer plus one. Mm -hmm. An emerald worth a thousand. Are you guys are you guys gonna keep that or you want to actually I think we decided we were gonna give it back to the Emerald Mages? You're gonna give yeah. it back to the Emerald Mages. Okay. Well, and, then we have, to the and then we have the shield, which we're gonna keep. How about how about this? I just trade the emerald for the ring of protection right now, flat out. That's fine. Oh, I'm, okay. not, I'm, not, I'm not greedy at all with the money. So okay. Okay. Uh, Orgrim says, "Well, oh, this was a, a prized emerald of my clan. If you feel that you would uh, that we should be the ones to keep hold of it, mm -hmm. I cannot refuse." Okay, that's work. Okay. Um, and we have that ring of resistance, the cold ring. 
right. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure somebody's going to use that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We. I think we also decided we we're going to sell the hammer. Yep. So how much would we get for the hammer? Give me a sec. So the nice thing about the ring of protection is eventually I might donate it to the next person if I get another ring or something that I need to replace. How many rings can you wear technically in D&D? &D? Uh, two. Hmm. Well, you can have up to three magic items attuned. Correct. Oh. Yeah. So maybe you could have on three rings, but those would be yeah, three attunements. Those, yeah, it would be three. Uh, you you have a total in your we'll call it the party's pool or treasure hoard, uh, thirty six hundred seventy. Wow. I'm just gonna put that here. And that is current. Every all the transactions of all the different sorts that have already happened. The only thing that's not included is that wand of bone. That one I didn't put in there because I think there was some question. I think Lycar should hold on to it because not only is it useful, but that's plus one to hit and damage or something, I think. with uh... mm -hmm. If you want to use the Wand of Bone, Lycar, um, okay. uh, I can tell you about it. Do I have to uh, give up my little dagger? My awesome lightning dagger? <laughs> uh, well, you don't have to give it up, but you know you have two hands, so... Bear in mind how you want to coordinate that. Um, and, but in terms of what it does, well, it does give you plus one to hit with spell attacks. So um, what do you have that you roll to hit? I think you have a firebolt. firebolt or ray of frost, something like that. Yeah, chaos bolt. Chaos bolt is to hit, yeah. I have a few that I roll to hit, yeah. Okay. You might get some. We'll and... As an action, you can cast Animate Dead as a third level spell. That will make you a skeleton or a zombie. Once you activate that, you cannot use that ability again until the next nightfall. Uh, how that works is that creature is going to be under your control for 24 hours. At the end of the 24 hours, you can cast it again and just like keep it going, keep it uh, kind of maintained or not. And then it just becomes a wandering undead of its own you know, right. wicked ways. <laughs> well, there has to be a skeleton around, right? It just doesn't pop you, out. You literally animate a, a bone pile or a corpse or something. Okay. Well, I mean, I can take it if nobody... If you're wants. into that sort of thing. No, well, like I said, Lycar and Necromancy, he just sees it as another form of magic, you know? Uh-huh. So, okay. I'll I'll hold on to the the uh, the bone wand. Um, but I do a couple things I want to buy. I want to buy, I want to clear out the uh, potions of healing. Okay. I'll give them money. So that'll give me four and then two of the bigger ones. So. All right. So you purchase all six of those, yes? Yep. Just, I'm going to hold on. You never know when someone could chug, chug one down. Okay. 200 plus 500 is uh, 700 gold pieces total. Okay. Nicely done. You're writing them down on your sheet, right, Lycar? Yep, so now I have six potions of healing and three potions of greater healing. Mm -hmm. I had one potion of superior healing from the prize that we got. Potion. Well, I had one potion of greater healing before. I'm not sure where I got it, but I had it wrote down. Mm -hmm. we, we purchased those a while back before okay. we left. Uh, yeah, we got one... Superior healing and potion of heroism. Mm -hmm. So here's my suggestion. Uh, let's figure out the rest of the item management um, in Discord um, off off uh, off the live stream. Okay. And let's uh, let's finish up uh, our session with a couple things that are happening in the story. I don't want to. I think we've done enough with the uh, the item yeah. stuff for now. Sure. Um, so what are, what do we have still? Uh, we have Kivish who is let's going to be goodbye to Kivish. Yeah, who's going to be traveling on to um, the moss beards? Yeah, he's going to go to the weeping woods and speak with the moss beards. Yeah, and then after that, he's going to start uh, developing this plan to travel to Mercolon's jaw. But that that thinks a long term yeah. thing. But immediately he's going to travel to weeping woods. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, are you taking anyone? 
Uh, is anyone tra accompanying you to the Weeping Woods? The entire entirety of anybody who's joining the new clan, um, including the... Uh, uh, I'm eating my trolls. Clan... Ragan, you said? Girl? Uh, Ragan. Uh, Ragan. Uh, including, including her and her entourage, uh, and all all the former axe warts, and you know any of Norgal's rock who who wish to seek a fortune, uh, in, in a new place, if they'll mm. go with him. Mm -hmm. Okay. He doesn't so want to like this, poach people. Th this but, is just you know. this is just the weeping woods thing to go to the druids and deliver uh, Avery's remains. Yeah, it's all on the same way, right? No, this is like here. I'll put it on the map. This would be like going out into the into the swamps, and then oh. Merkelon's jaw is going to be the peninsula below. Oh, have I forgotten where the weeping woods are? Oh, okay, that's where the weeping woods are. For some reason, I thought. Uh, yeah, it's it's a bit of a trek through of the like, swamps. I was thinking of like uh, is it called Applewood? The place over to the west. Uh, anyway, okay. um, suggestions, but can you fly yeah. as a wild shape yet? Yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah, okay. if he's going alone, he'll probably do it that way. Just he'll he'll be a bird. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. A heron flies over the swamps. There's a heron carrying a skull flying overhead. <laughs> no, the skull <laughs> merges with him, like all his items. Yeah, all the items he carries merge with him. So it's just burnt skull on half the bird's head. <laughs> all right. Kivish, Kivish is traveling as a heron over the swamp lanes. Hmm. 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 Well, I think we're going to just leave that as a bit of a mystery. We'll come back. Good luck, yeah. Nick. Just dead yeah, I did a I did have a bit of a role. We'll leave we'll leave that as a bit of a fade to black end of a scene and we'll hear of Kivish's um Holy. <laughs> We'll hear of Kivish again at a later <laughs> time. Um but, but I guess before he left, was there any parting words? I think we should at least say something. Sure. Mm. Goodbye. <laughs> by, by the next time that I will see all of you, I Anyone suspect that me? you may have seen things. I want you to know that in my, in, not my, in, in the new home I shall set aside for the, these folks here. You are to be welcome, and by Morpheus you shall have only good dreams. And continues on for however long after that. I feel like I just want to place one hand on his shoulder, look him in the eye, and say, hey, and then walk away. Oh, not open up. <laughs> <laughs> open up, yeah. Open. That's that's like, how you say open up in primordial. Hey. Yeah. Like Orgr our Orgrim gives you a dwarven farewell, also. Like our pats him on the shoulder and Kivish, I consider you a friend. May you have As many I do you. We will see each other again sometime. We will. And oh, holds up an imaginary drink. Yeah. Farewell, Kivish. Unless Marexa gets her claws on you, then I'll see you in a hundred years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Orgrim as well gives you a dwarven farewell. Uh, you know, be strong, take care of yourself, travel well, travel safely. May the, may the swamps bring you many fruitful moments. And may your dreams be peaceful and uh, invigorating and re-energizing. Keep your beard growing long. And I hope this new lass here is a good one for you. And may you have a, a fine drink in your hand always and another one at the ready. All right. 
<laughs> so that uh, he'll, he'll, uh, <laughs> well no if he says anything it'll be like it'll be something on on the line all on the lines of um do not you go further astray amaranta is not the answer i have much to think on about this there's some confusion but i will Give it much thought and not be. All right, he walked away a while ago. (laughs) 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 All right, right, so so Kivish is gone. I miss Kivish's meandering. He'll be back. Speech. (laughs) (laughs) He'll be back when we least expect him. (laughs) Precisely. You you say that, but I suspect that he's going to get himself killed without us. Oh, the mm. library. Okay, yeah, let's go, let's go to the library. Yeah, if was, any character of mine gets killed, it's going to be Card. Card is an adventurer through and through, and he's <laughs> he's not going to be so... Uh, well, I mean, t- next time's your end. first session, or your second session, so... Oh, oh, the curse. The, curse. the dreaded yeah. sophomore session. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, so the library of Noggin Vault is a, a wonderful... Uh, dwarven reliquary uh, repository rather um, big stony shelves and like stairs going up uh, a couple different levels and there are uh, plentiful tables and reading nooks and all manner of uh, uh, scroll and parchment and lots of tablets lots and lots of dwarven tablets uh, there are books there are vellums there are uh, it's just kind of stuff literally stuffed in all all the crannies here i have many things i want to uh look up okay are you just perusing along or are you looking for something in specific i'm looking for many specific things okay Um, what are you looking for but i'm gonna only do the primary ones because of time okay and we can go over little things later um, so the two topics that I had primary in mind, one, see what knowledge they have on the masked one, to mm. see what they know about him, mm-hmm. plus what I might be able to learn, uh, more useful information and two true names of, uh, certain mm. outsiders, shall we say that, uh, maybe of the more chaotic and perhaps Evilish, you know, sorts. So here's a question: Are you uh, seeking out these things just oh, independently, yeah. not tell, talking to anyone, or are you consulting with the Emerald Mages? Oh hell no! I'm not going to consult with the Emerald Mages. I don't trust those guys. All right, uh, let's start with the masked one topic. Make an investigation check. Yeah. Um, if I if the idea helps give me any sort of advantage, um, I will. Uh, look for an index, but if not, then I'm going to use my advantage from the session. Yeah, go ahead and, and use the inspiration. Yep, using my inspiration right now. All right, I rolled pretty good. I got a 14 and a 17, so let's use the 17. Uh, investigation, I think, is actually, yep, uh, that's a 19 total. Mm, excellent. You come across. Only a small mentioning of the masked one. Uh, there is a tome that is detailing artifacts. Um, you know, uh, wondrous magical artifacts of of history, and uh, it does not actually say the name uh, masked one. Well, but, I can read any rune, so maybe there's a rune for it. You know, uh huh. It's I not a rune. Know. It just uses a different name. Um, and it speaks of, it speaks of an entity known as shadow steel. And it is described as a golem, a sentient golem. Uh, that's it's in Dwarven, but that's what it seems to indicate to you. Uh, or maybe you could take it in a broader stroke as like a construct. Yeah. And it's uh, something that was 
created and the shadow fell by unknowable, doomful uh, arcanist and was a basically the undoing of the creator. This the, it ended up power too powerful and sentient of its own volition. Um, it was at one point finally destroyed by a band of of heroes, but it could not be completely destroyed. And the best they could do was to scatter the individual parts across the world. It had a mask helm for the top that wielded a great blade of shadows. It had armor pieces and all. Interesting. Very interesting. I've written down the name and I will look into that more. Okay. Um, you uh, and you yourself reading this, you are convinced that is not an actual name. It's just what they're calling, yeah. Like you know, like shadow the steel. titling or what people called it, like oh, the shadow steel. Well, it's an old name, which means that there might be other references and other places to that. Mm. So that was an obscure little bit you managed to like find after you know a lot of research in here, and you're you know you're using like a, like you said an index to get yourself oriented about the place. Uh, you find another book, an, a tome of sorts, um, entitled The Eastern Vessel and Other Tales of Demonology. And you read through this tome of the various stories and legends that are within. Also and from... Yeah. Just uh -huh. in case. Um, yeah, all, all tales of demonology related things. And uh, you learn from this book three demon names. Um, you learn the name of a Balgura named Mab Mamupul. M-A-M-U-P-U-L, Mamupul. I may have you uh, spell that at some point. Uh, yeah, I can give it to you in a message later. You learn the name of a Tanaruk whose name is Shezooks. And specifically from the Eastern Vessel tale, you learn the name of a Hezrau by the name of Siukpran. No no barb devils? All demons. Uh, uh, Abagor? Yeah. No, these are, no, I know Abagor's name. Yeah. <laughs> um, All demons specifically in this tome. Hezra, I don't know if I can summon that. That might be too high a level. Well, you have the names at least. Yeah, I mean, it could be useful at some point. Is anyone else uh, doing research in the library here? Drake can't um, really read, so <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> I, he, I, if it's simple literature, he can read it. Or uh -huh. religious text, he can read. But otherwise, he can't read. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Drake, you know what would help you read all languages? <laughs> <laughs> Packed with the, the vast ones. <laughs> the of the <laughs> you don't even have to learn it. It just cheats for you and translates it. <laughs> this one would rather speak better than read. <laughs> well, that was out, totally out of character. <laughs> yeah, uh, Lycar, what of you? Lycar is going to do... <clears throat> Like research on see if you can find any more about his family and hmm. um, especially like his grandfather. Any if there is any information, there may not be. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Yeah, make an investigation check. Okay. Jesus, investigation. I mean, if nothing else, Talvantis. Yeah. I got a whopping seven. Hmm. So you follow the index uh, as best you can, and you do not come up with anything of note. Would anyone else? Are you are you talking to anyone else about this? That, I mean, was, yeah. that was you by yourself. Yeah, I'll see if uh, Orgrim. Are you sure you don't have anything about this major cataclysm that happened in a library? Hmm. Let me take a look. Uh, let me pull up Orgrim here because Orgrim, I think, has some good investigation. Where are we at? Land of Dreams and Nightmares. NPCs? No, Ikoria NPCs. Here we are. Orgrim Half Gray. Uh, 
All right, excellent. He has he has plus five. Twenty-three. Come, come with me. I think I might have found something here, like our. Okay. Um, it's written in Dwarvish. I don't imagine that you speak this. I do not. Okay. I will uh I'll translate for you. Oof. He uh he blows off some dust. Whew. This is an old one. Uh history book, yes. Uh he's reading through this old dusty history book. There is a chapter about the Titan Telvantis, a storm titan that um as you discovered in Omen Mox, um he fought the god Illus the Lantern. And in this fight, they destroyed each other. And through his destruction, he, um, he uh, infused the, um, uh, well, he meant to like uh, birth uh, um, people, right? He meant to birth uh, children, but what came out were just the methods. Um, sorry, 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 sorry. I, I've just totally com um, conflated two different things. Talvantis' brother was the one at Omen Mox. Um, Vorst uh, Brand. Brand. Yeah, the Brand. fire and ice titan. And so his 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 simultaneous destruction, he just kind of like birthed the method, so it didn't turn out right. Talvantis, the storm titan. Went to um, the temple he, at the end of the world. Come again? He went to the temple at the end of the world. Yeah, he went to the temple at the end of the world, uh, where is the archangel um, Vectariel. And um he did not succeed in defeating the archangel however he did succeed in his progeny um he at one point fathered a child he fathered a child from a mortal from a human woman uh, Telvantis seduced and impregnated a young woman named Frieza. Frieza gave birth to a son, a demigod son, who was called Atalos. Atalos came to be known as the god Atalos the Reaver. Right. Who is also a ally and opponent of Dinosis. Dinosis and Atalos are bitter rivals. So according to this history book, uh, Telvantis sired uh, Atalos, who went on to become a god uh, in Napurna. He went on to become a god of storms, of destruction, and of reavers. He is worshipped by a pirate company known as the Sons of the Tempest in Napurna. Um, and Orgrim uh, says that according to, uh, whenever this history book was written, it seemed like the Sons of the Tempest were like rising to power and causing some havoc, uh, like a rebellion basically in Napurna against its, uh, against its governance. There is one other interesting thing of note about uh, Telvantis in this book. So he seduced and uh, uh, got a son off of this young woman named Frieza. Frieza was married. She was the wife of Ringolf Bracken, Knight of Hawkness. Rockness. Good God, your family name has messed me up. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's reminding me of uh, one of your videos where the guy kept staying Hearthstone. <laughs> Do you remember that video? Uh, yeah. that's, that's Hearthstone. No, Hearthridge. <laughs> oh, I keep saying Hearthstone. <laughs> oh, if you've yeah, ever how seen many takes you on that? And finally, it's like everyone calmed down. Like, okay, here we go. And then and someone I goes, come from Hearth the cat Ridge, down Hearth Hearthstone. <laughs> it's ready to, and you hear Hearthstone. Uh, we are Was that Crows in the Mist or something? What's that? Was that Crows in the Mist or something? No, it was That's my like, uh, shit D&D versus awesome D&D <laughs> video. 
And you know what's interesting? There is a uh, like a Wizards of the Coast, actual Wizards of the Coast video out there somewhere. It's um, it's one of those like um, oh, uh, charity game day things that they did. And, like Mike Merles DM'd it, and I think Christopher Perkins was one of the characters, and like a guy from Critical Role is a character. One of the players on there when he introduces his character and the 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 like D and D community like voted on their characters' names and such. He goes, "My name is." Oh, okay, yeah, obviously they got that from my video. <laughs> I'm Ravensong Moonblade. Yeah, Ravensong Moonblade. Um, well, so uh, yeah, so just to connect some dots there, Telvantis Telvantis falls passionately in lust with this woman, uh, Frieza, uh, and he kind of steals her from this knight of rockness named Ringolf Bracken. She gives birth to a son, like a half Titan son, who's like a demigod thing, a tower who becomes this god of Innapurna, who's a rival god of Dinosis. Then Telvantis goes on to be defeated by the Archangel Victariel, the angel who uh, stands watch of the temple at the end of the world, who Noxiqual has ultimately been tasked to slay. It's like his ultimate quest. I mean, I'm sure I'll find something else after that. It's on the list. We'll get to it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's one of the things I have to do before breakfast. <laughs> Uh, so this all happened quite some time ago in the past. Um, not uh, like her. Make a, what would this be? An intelligence or an insight? Well, let's see. Insight is like it's wisdom, right? You're like reading between the lines, you're using intuition. You're kind of like feeling someone out, determining motives and stuff. And then intelligence is like, uh, reason, rationale, information, logic. It's kind of like putting two and two together, right? Investigation. Make an investigation check. Yeah, okay. we'll go with that. 18. Nice. Something kind of clicks for you. There has been a dark rider following you. And a dark rider that seems to be in a dispute with Telvantis. And one of the things, one of the last things, I think the last thing you heard him say was, she was mine. Oh, the knight. The the dude, um, Ringolf Bracken. Ringolf Bracken. Yep. Mm. Yep. Perhaps his... Uh... Oh, Oops. maybe he's turned into like a death knight or something. Who knows? Yeah. He would certainly have to be something not normal to still be uh, yeah. animated and not just bones in a crypt. He could be an undead or he could be something else. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that was a worthwhile trip to the library. Yeah, I think we so found out a lot of info. So if I ever dream I about him again, I can call him by his name. Mm -hmm. Okay. God, you think of a lot of stuff on your free time. <laughs> I never dream up all this stuff. <laughs> I, I, I am merely a vessel. I I just I'm dipping myself in the channel of divine inspiration. Me and the daemons of my house. What you don't okay. see is there's like actual inspiration just below the level of the camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just something I like, yes. Inspiration. Uh no, no one... intro behind the scenes, he's got all these Slays in a way. After him posted notes. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not that at all. It's a brain in a jar just there on the other side uh, of my there desk. You go. There you go. <laughs> well, I guess I'll have to get myself a brain in the jar. <laughs> there is one final thing that you come across of uh, of note while you're in this library. Actually, I guess there's a couple other things, but. We'll, we we'll, can uh, go over them. Yeah, yeah we, we can go yeah. over them. But there's one final thing I'll just drop in here at the end of the session. Is um, you find a map of the Cairn Coast. Hmm. And so I have done I've done some updating on the map of Drekengrim, and I'll, I'll add in a little bit more. But the Cairn Coast oh, yeah. is this region. 
That's awesome. So uh, you've got a few things marked on here now. I put some more icons on it. Um, you learn Latin about Lance White. Uh, that's the one that we're looking for. You don't think so. Um, I mean, you've spoken with uh, with Drake about it, and it doesn't seem like they made it into a bay. Yeah. Yeah, but Who it's some sort of shipwreck called the Laughing Lance Wife. There's this rocky thing called Basilica in the K. There's some other unnamed ones, which we can get into more later. This is called Dusk Isle right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm definitely down for exploring and uh, maybe adding some things onto here. Excellent. Oh, also just for uh, for kicks, here's Granite Grotto where we just had the one shot. Uh, there's Silverdale Quarry, the like current active quarry for Sumnerfield, and here is the Murky Rills where Parkereth is from. Hmm. Awesome. All right, right. So that's a mighty fine place name, session. Murky Rills. So what uh, what we'll do then is between next session, between now and next session, um, we will talk about where the ship is sailing. And as long as I can just get like an advance notice, I'll kind of know where to, to prep and, and flesh out some details. Okay, I'll try and get on the Discord a little bit. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, thank you, everybody, everybody who's been uh, following this whole time and, and uh, watching the, uh, along with us. Um, I guess I should do a little giveaway thing. So uh, if anyone is uh, interested, uh, Violet got it last time, so I think she might be the only one with us. But somebody comment, leave a comment in the chat now, and I will s I'll send out a little prize. <laughs> it says we have 15 watching now. Anybody? No, oh, just anyone on my, just on my stream will say anything. Uh, I don't think I have anyone on my stream. Watching now. Yeah. Going once, going twice. Sold. I'll send it to Parkerith. All right. Uh, thank you all very much. Uh, a very interesting session full of many things. Oh, wait. Someone said something. If you want to. Long shot, a prize. <laughs> Flash. Oh, yay. Long shot. Okay. Long shot. Long shot. Send me an email if you will. Expertthebard at gmail.com. All right. Long shot. Hit me up there. Send me an email and I'll get you a little uh, a little thank you prize. There'll be more a, a, next a time bit. Forever. Yeah, a bit of uh La lore or art or other uh, bric-a-brac from the uh, from the vaults of Esper the Bard. All right, once again, thank you so much, guys. It was another great session. Indeed, pleasure as well. It was very fun. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, and I'll see everyone next time.